From Levi's Stadium, welcome to the 2019 Red Box Bowl on Fox. It is the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. It is Cal and Illinois on a perfect day from Santa Clara. Now the Golden Bears looking for their first bowl win since 2015 and trying to do it in front of a very Cal friendly crowd about a 45 mile trip from Berkeley and here comes Illinois in its first bowl game since 2014. Welcome inside Joe Davis Brock Heward and yeah, Bruce Feldman joins us in a moment. So for Cal let's start there third season under Justin Wilcox he's got him headed in the right direction. He's had back to back winning seasons and for the Bears it's the first time in a decade they've been able to do that. How many coaches do we run into that always want to build an identity to have a culture. Well that's been established in three short years there here at Cal and I think a big part of it is not only Justin Wilcox a defensive coach but he's got his mouthpiece. He's got his middle linebacker his all American Evan Weaver that I think is played a huge role in really forming that identity. It's not many kids today that you see that are as vocal, that are as verbose, that are willing to put themselves out there as much as Evan, but he backs it up. The country's leading tackler, and he's right in the middle of the action. And on the other side, well, it's awfully nice to have a quarterback, too. You got the quarterback of the defense in Evan Weaver, and you got the quarterback of the offense in Chase Garbers. You can see this is a different team when he was under center. When he finished the game, they were unblemished this year, and while emotionally they play this game very differently, Differently. Don't kid yourself. This team goes as Evan Weaver goes and as Chase Garbers goes offensively. Kind of similar stories for these two programs. The shift gears to Illinois now. Lovey Smith is in his fourth season, Brock. He won nine games over his first three years. Got a chance for his seventh here in year four today. Yeah, it took him a little longer to build some of that culture, to build some of that identity. And Daly Harding really came on. The all conference performer, much like Evan on the other side, sets the tempo. Well, he's the, the nation's second leading tackler, only behind Evan. Weaver he also has two pick sixes to his record he's a playmaker that loves to run sideline to sideline and like Chase Garbers on the other side when the Illini have had Brandon Peters under center they've been a better team much more functional offensively the ability to run it the ability to throw it they believe in him and really he gives him a fighting chance today. So we've got the top two tacklers in the country. We've got two quarterbacks that have made their teams completely different when they've been available and both of them starting today as we get you to break with our progressive insurance game countdown. The Red Box Bowl from Santa Clara under light blue skies coming up on Fox. Just about set to go with the 2019 Red Box Bowl on Fox before opening kick. Here's Bruce Feldman. Joe Lovey Smith talks about how important it is to him to finish this season the right way. And that's when the winning record and really has a launch pad into 2020 to a team that he feels like he's been building toward. On the other side of the field, Justin Wilcox looked at this as a way to get to an eighth win. And that's something that this program has not done in five years. He told me this is really a huge game for us. We have talked about it at length. What we have done is not quite good enough and the players understand it. We got to continue to raise the bar on what's expected here and that's the catapult into Cal football 2.0. After a decade of bouncing around as a defensive coordinator, one of the guys that he always admired and that he studied is the head coach on the other sideline today, Lovey Smith. He was in his fourth season as the head coach after more than a decade as a head coach in the NFL. You know, Justin, in fact, saying he probably annoyed Lovey as they got some time together. You know, it's been a long month with some bowl preparation, spent a, an afternoon together getting ready for this game, really picked Lovey's brain. And while they're two defensive guys, Joe, they teach defense very differently. A lot of zone for Lovey, play fast, cut it loose, and really using a lot of the intellect of many of these Cal defenders to play a lot of different scheme on that side of the ball. 11th meeting between these programs. First one since 2005. Illinois 7 and 3 all time against Cal. Illinois won the toss, deferred to the second half. And so we will see Cal with the ball first and their sophomore quarterback out of Newport Beach, California, Chase Garbers, who broke his collarbone at the end of September and missed four games. He came back in mid November against USC. Unfortunately, suffered a head injury, had to leave that game. It was full go for the final couple games of the regular season. You touched on it off of the top this is a different team when they've got him yeah he's just Southern California cool up in NorCal but he's also just got that game well whatever it's whatever it takes not the prettiest but man he loves to run 
the two game winning clutch drives this season a big reason they're here this afternoon a lot of poise one of them at Washington one of them against Stanford first win in the big game in a decade for Cal but this one begins with a sack first man there was the Berkeley native Milo Eifler with a sack for Illinois and this is an active crew for Illinois that's going to challenge this front and Mike Safel is right in the middle he's the voice he's the leader he was a rugby star and you'll see he loves to mix it up right in the middle of that action all five of those guys will return to Berkeley next year and watch for Nico Romilio. He had two enormous games to end the season. A lot of zone defense. I think he's got an opportunity this in the slot to have a very productive day. Yeah, about 157 yards and the big game win against Stanford for Romilio. Garber's well protected. Throws this one behind the true freshman Makai Polk, and it's quickly third and long. Take a look at this Illinois defense. One of the most disruptive defenses you'll find. And more disruptive when Batiku on the edge was healthy. Battle an ankle in the second half of the season. He is still their leader with eight sacks. Former five-star USC player. A difference maker. We talked about Harding in the opener. He is just a stud tackler. And Sidney Brown, the safety. you got to have great safety play in Lovey Smith's defense. And he does with... Both Brown and Green at safety. Uh, defense number three in the country in takeaways. Number one in the country in defensive touchdowns with six. Garber's over the middle, has a first down. On third and 16, he finds his tight end, Jake Tonjes, for 25. And no surprise, this is how a lot of people love to attack that cover two. They love to the vertical. You can see the two safeties. Cover two, those two safeties get wide right up the middle for the big third down conversion. Christopher Brown Jr. swinging out of the backfield. He struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage as Nate Hobbs flies over there to stop him. You put it all together, and this Cal offense is the least productive one in the Pac-12 at just 20 points per game. But again, when they've had Chase Garber, they've gone 6-2. and two. Now, if you break it down to the games where he has started and played at least a half, they're 6-0. and oh. Otherwise, this season, 1-5. and five. There's the backup, Devon Modster. Handled much of the quarterbacking duties while Garbers was out. Off play action on the roll. Garbers finds Romijo. His first catch goes for three, and again, it's third and long. Now, one thing that really stood out in getting to watch all these games, right, with bull prep, we get an entire month to take a look at both of these teams. Both defenses are going to challenge the quarterbacks today because there's not a lot of freebies. You're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to throw that vertical on time down the middle of the field. You're going to have to throw accurately into zone coverage. For Peters on the other side, he's going to have to read a complex defense, but both of these defenses so sound fundamentally. Picked up a third and 16 already on this drive here on third and seven. Illinois shows pressure and brings it. Garber's retreating, heaves it out of bounds, and it's fourth down. Pressure coming from Olawale Batiku. It was a nice job. An extra defender comes. Lovey Smith does not love to pressure blitz, loves to rush four, but he brings five and actually six come as the running back protects. There's nowhere to go Number in man-to-man -man coverage. And Lost just, the down. Fourth down at the spot of the foul. And as you just heard from our referee today, Chase unable to get outside the tackle box. No receiver around. So throw on a penalty on top of it. Free of this SEC crew for the Red Box Bowls. Johnny Navarro goes back to return the punt from the Australian Stephen Coots. A couple Australian punters in the game today. It's almost like a surprise when the punter's not Australian in this day and age in college football. So many products out of Pro Kick Australia. It's down to the 29 yard line, 36 yard punt. We get our first look at Illinois' offense and the transfer quarterback out of Michigan, Brandon Peters, on the other side of this break. Brandon Peters, former Indiana High School Mr. Football at Avon High School near Indianapolis, chose Michigan over Nebraska, LSU. Just about everybody else had his options. He decided to go to Michigan, started four games as a redshirt freshman, then lost the job to Shea Patterson, got his degree from Michigan in three years, and so transferred with two years of eligibility and won the job in fall camp. Illinois starts its first drive from the 29 with a play-action pass that goes right through the hands of the defensive back, uh, Chigazea Nuziam, who, boy, had a gift wrap there. Yeah, and Washington, the receiver on the outside, didn't even see the ball. He didn't even locate it. And for a group that calls themselves the Takers, a chance for Cal right there to take one away from the redshirt freshman Anusium. 
Just couldn't quite do it. First run play is in Peters' hands on the read. He makes a man miss, breaks it into the secondary. He's underrated as a runner with those long strides. The 6'5 Peters goes for 29. A good high school basketball player out of the state of Indiana. Everybody grows up playing basketball. Just a good athlete. He's actually played in a bowl game. Started for Harbaugh in the Outback Bowl against South Carolina a few years ago. And yes, an underrated athlete. Here comes Reggie Corbin. Room off of the left side. And he gets bumped to the sideline and hits it hard for a first down. Daniel Scott pushes him out behind this offensive line. One of the nation's most experienced overall, but finally beginning to deal with some injuries. No Doug Kramer today, and right here, Kendrick Green was questionable. He tweaked something in practice leading up. And they slide him in the center, the guy they call the protector, and immediately you see Coburn's burst. Just give him some room, and he is capable. Takes the fake here. Underneath throw, incomplete, looking for Navarro, covered by Bynum. Part of this Cal defense, which has gone from one of the worst in the country in the final days under Sonny Dykes to one of the best in the Pac-12 under veteran, Justin Wilkins. Yeah, pretty veteran up front. Luke Beckett really sets the tone there and, and is a tough guy to move, especially with all his own run. We talk about Evan Weaver, over 400 tackles in his career as a Golden Bear and some moving pieces in that secondary today. No Davis, no Turner. It's going to put Scott in the mix at safety. On the sweep, it's the backup quarterback, the freshman Isaiah Williams, and then the ball gets flipped free and carried by the right guard, Richie Pettibone, for a first down to the 11. No, I saw them work this yesterday. I mean, it's a risky play, <laughs> but it's one you put in for yeah. the bowl game. The true freshman what? first carry to the right guard, senior transfer, oh. quite an option play. And Richie Pettibone saying, I like this freshman quarterback, Isaiah Williams, <laughs> that they put in the slot, and he makes something happen. Corbin slips a tackler and then goes down to the 10. But that is worth mentioning with Williams. He is a quarterback by Trey played in a couple games, but we will see him today. Well, maybe not after the fumble. I don't know how much we'll see him carry it. But Rod Smith, the offensive coordinator, knows they need some juice. They're down a bunch of talented wide receivers, and they just want to get his playmaking ability. So we'll see him in the slot. But I like the start by the Illini. A little mix of QB run, inside run, outside run, some RPO. Pretty efficient here in their first drive in a month. I mean, this is a group that has done nothing the last two games. Just 10 points each of the final two games of the regular season. Of course, against Northwestern. That was without Brandon Peters. On second and nine, it's Corbin. And it's third down. And overall, they're middle of the pack in the Big Ten. Helps getting Peters back, but still really depleted on the outside. Three of their top receivers out. Josh Amaterbebe, by far their most talented receiver, unable to go today with an injury. So that man there, Donnie Navarro, is at the top of the depth chart. He's an FCS player two years ago. A walk-on transfer is now the man at receiver. On third and six, Peters lofting for the end zone. It's broken up. And incomplete. The freshman in Newseum who dropped the interception to start the drive defends Casey Washington fourth down. That's redshirt freshman on true freshman Washington. And you get the one-on-one -on -one you want. Everything is there. And that's where the big body, Imanur Bebe, was such a difference maker for the Illini this year. Nine touchdown receptions. He so often leveraged that body, won that one-on-one, -on -one, but credit to Newseum. A great break on the first play of the game and a wonderful job separating the receiver from ball on third down. Illinois had the biggest upset win in college football this year, beating Wisconsin. And James McCourt, now the game winner, his time expired. Here is the game opener. First three points of the game on a chip shot field goal. Chase Garbers and the Cal offense back out there after this. The Red Box Bowl on Fox is sponsored by the Jeep Big Finish event. So hurry in and end the year with a great deal. A decade ago in the Bay Area Bowl game, Matt Barkley threw for 350 yards, leading USC to a 24-13 win against Boston College. And what was Pete Carroll's final game as the Trojans head coach? Mm. 64 yards and nine plays, pretty good looking drive for an offense that has struggled lately. Yeah, and that's the difference I think Brandon Peters makes. Right, just the confidence that everybody feels when he's in that huddle, and you see his mix of a little bit of run. This is an offense that likes running quarterbacks, and he's willing. Deshaun Collins from the three. Uh, he's crunch of the 20. That's Cal beginning its second drive in a season that 
Started off 4-0, and oh, but then we talked about Chase Garbage starting to deal with those injury issues. Breaks his collarbone against Arizona State, and they lose four consecutive games. He comes back, though. They win three of the final four, including their first win against Stanford since 2009. And they've got back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time since that same year. Yeah, and I think that Stanford win was, was probably the biggest. That and Washington early in the season, and both of those were very similar. I grind it out, get the game to the fourth quarter, and go win it late, go finish. A big part of what Justin Wilcox wants to really establish within this culture, and as Bruce said in the open, why this one is so important. Here's Christopher Brown Jr. spinning his way off of the first contact and getting five. Sidney Brown with the tackle. Chase Garber's committed to Sonny Dykes. Of course, Sonny Dykes' wide open system, similar to what Garber's ran at Corona Del Mar in Newport Beach. Yeah, first thing that Justin Wilcox did after he took the job was fly down to Newport Beach and convince Chase Garber's to stick with Cal. Pulls it here. Yeah, it gets run down from behind. Third and short. And once again, a really nice job by the Illini right there. Right, little play action. You're trying to catch them sleeping. You're not going to do it. This is a group defensively that just does not do a ton of things. They major in their scheme. It's man frequently mixed in with a lot of zone coverage, and it's really hard to fool these guys defensively. And it allows them to play really fast, which is a big part of why they've created 28 takeaways. Motions out on third and four. Garber's looking over the middle. He's well protected. He scrambles. He's chased by Milan. He could run for a first down and does to extend the drive. Bumped out of bounds by Eifler on a gain of five. And Milo doing a little talking. Uh -huh. I think he's happy to be back in the Bay Look at all the eyes. Look at all those eyes that the defender drop into their zones. That is what Chase is going to be looking at a ton. And he's either got to throw with anticipation into those zones, or if he wants to extend the play, which he's capable of doing, go get that first down with your legs. First down from the 31. Christopher Brown Jr. with a big hole. Brown Jr. into the secondary. Inside the 30 and pulled down. A huge gain for Brown. 50 yards and it's first down at the 15. Well, this is a gap scheme. They block down and they pull the true freshman guard, Medauer, there, and he comes around. And when you get the block at the second level and you get 230 pounds rolling, uh, it's a good good day for the Cal Golden Bears over 100 yards in the finale against UCLA uh, Really well blocked and you can follow his stat line run your finger along it right to the win loss column He runs for more than hundred per game in the wins below 50 in the losses. It's 50 alone right there There's a flag down as Garbers gets pulled down by Io Shogbanyo This is Matt Leffler. More than four in the backfield on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Second of the day and the least penalized team in the conference. Yeah, and Justin knows that that is just one of those unforced errors. You will see them in bowl games when you've been off for a month, especially when you get into some situational football, third down into the red zone, a creative formation there. But he's writing a little note. You've got to get yourself on the line and get lined up. So first and 15. Remigio with a fly motion. They come straight ahead with Deshaun Collins. Not much there as time here Oliver makes the tackle. Final game for Bo Baldwin, offensive coordinator for the Golden Bears. He's headed to Cal Poly to become the head coach. Taking over a triple option program. Going to take him some time to really flip the personnel there. But one thing he does use is a lot of formation and a lot of personnel. And you will watch on so many of these snaps. Watch that motion. He uses that to really probe that defense to try to give his quarterback answers. He's a fun guy to study on tape because they do an awful lot offensively. Second and long, play action for Garber. Steps up and floats into the end zone incomplete. Pass intended for Kekoa Crawford, and there is a flag down. 
That may be a hold as Kokoa was coming out of his break on the corner route. He could hold on the back end of that secondary. Pass interference on the defense, number 21. That's a 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So they get Jartavius Martin the safety as they look for Crawford here in the corner. And you're going to see it right here, the little corner route, and you're beaten, and that's obvious. And it's pass interference because the ball was in the air. If Garbers had still been holding it, that's a holding call. And I think the key there is you just can't get flat footed. You got to anticipate, can't reach and grab. That's an obvious penalty. Kiko Crawford is a guy back there cautiously optimistic, could have a big day today. He's missed seven of the last eight games because of injury, but how many times do you see a guy struggle with injuries and then look like a new guy when the ball rolls around after about a month of rest? On first and goal, they fake it to Brown. Gerber says a wide open Colin Moore. It's his first career touchdown. And just his second career catch. Yeah, remember I talked about being totally sound and never blowing assignments, <laughs> covering everybody and no gimmies? Well, you can throw that out. Right, the guy that uh, has not caught a touchdown in his career is gray shirted. He's worked the hard road to, to really get on this field and contribute. That feels awfully good. And nice for Chase to have a wide open receiver and for more to finish. So 7-3 as Cal finds the end zone for the first time today. It was set up at a 50-yard run by Christopher Brown Jr. And then Colin Moore out of Novato, California, the high school quarterback, beneficiary of a toss from his current quarterback, Chase Garbers. 7-3, Golden Bears. Christopher Brown had the long run that set it up. Cal leads for the first time today, 7-3. Colin Moore with the touchdown. Just his second career catch. <laughs> He's telling him, yeah, did you see that corner route I ran? I've been open all season on that. Finally. <laughs> Finally, Chase is able to track me down. You always remember that first touchdown. Trey Brown back to return the kick. It's a good one from Gabe Shemyen Yetz. Now for Illinois, started the season with a couple wins. Games they should have won against Akron and UConn, but then four consecutive losses. A couple of those without Brandon Peters. Similar story to Cal without Chase Garbers. They struggled when they didn't have their quarterback. But then, my goodness, they beat Wisconsin in the biggest upset win this season in college football. And then they have the biggest comeback win in program history against Michigan State before laying a dud to finish 29-10 yeah. against Northwestern really in the finale. Depth tested so much at the end of that year. They were so beat up at the end and, and it really stung to not have Brandon in the finale against Northwestern. But the signature win, it took four years, but they finally got it against Wisconsin. Here's Peters off of the read. Already one big running play, gets six here. You put it all together, it's the first bowl game since 2014. They've got a chance today at their first winning season since 2011. And you return an awful lot of people next season. 16 of these starters will be back. A senior quarterback, a bunch of senior transfers, really built for next year. Peters dumps it off. That is a one-handed catch by Dre Brown, and he's got a first down stopped by Cameron Bynum, or the ninth catch of the year for Brown. And he was one of the won't be back, the redshirt senior. Well done. They like Corbin, really, in a lot of their run game. Corbin's a capable pass catcher as well, but Dre Brown is very, very instinctive out of the backfield. Nice job to reel in that throw. On the 36, it's Brown on the ground into the arms of Cameron Good. We talked about them being diminished offensively today. Their top three receivers throw Jordan Holmes and therefore their top five or six receivers out today. And you watch your matter, baby. And, you know, for Peters, just to have that guy to lean on. Nine touchdown receptions himself. So half of their 18 touchdown passes, he found a way to corral. And many of them just bodying people up and being a difference maker in the air. Back to the ground on second down. It's Brown again, and it'll be third and short. What's that like as a quarterback, knowing that your options are so limited? Well, you got to be careful because you can't play in a box. You got to trust whoever is out there. 
And the good news is you've had a month to plan for this. You've largely known you were not going to have those guys. So plenty of work between Navarro and Williams and the freshman Washington. But the one thing you've got to do to me, Joe, at that position is instill confidence. Say it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the other three are out. It's your time to perform. Well, in this case, he splits out a tight end and Daniel Barker on third and two. Rolling to the wide side, turns the shoulders and cuts it loose for the true freshman, Washington. First down for a guy who's really started to come on late this year. And that is a throw that instills confidence in the people around you. A sprint out. There's out routes in front, and what you're trying to do is buy the eyes of that corner, and that's exactly what they've done. They saw Nuzium earlier be aggressive, felt like he would sit on that out route in front, and he could throw that seam shot right behind him for the big first down conversion. Round Rock, Texas native. They bring in Isaiah Williams at quarterback here. We noticed playing the slot earlier. Hands it off to Rayvon Bonner. Who slips forward for four. Just any way to generate offense that they can. Yeah, and that's an advantage, I think, that Rod Smith, the offensive coordinator at Illinois, has as well. That's what he likes to do. He comes from the Rich Rod school of offense, of be aggressive, get everybody involved, play with some tempo. And Isaiah, a big-time recruit two years ago. The two-time Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year, the true freshman, you're going to see him running around for a bunch of years with the Illini. He's a dynamic kid. There's a coordinator, Rod right. Smith. You got a miniature Lovey Smith beard going on. <laughs> Second and six, Corbin. Doesn't get much. Third down. Cameron Good, another tackle. Here you see a little bit of that tempo, trying to simplify a Cal defense. But especially on third down, likes to do a lot of different things. So get right to the line of scrimmage. Do not allow them to substitute and try to keep them in a little more of their base looks. And Illinois has been one of the worst third down teams in the country this year on third and five. A handoff to Corbin, who's got a first down. They run it on third and five and get seven with a redshirt senior from Maryland. And Tim DeRuiter, the D coordinator for Cal, talked about the edges of this defense. When you play this scheme, you got to set that edge right there. And unfortunately, Ben Hawk Schreider just loses contain. He's playing for Tevin Paul, who is out today. And when you're playing against Corbin, when you're playing this scheme, you've got to set the edge of that line of scrimmage. Yeah, a couple key pieces out for the Bears today. You mentioned Tevin Paul, Ashton Davis as well. As Bonner goes for a couple. And Ben Hawk Schreider makes the tackle. So you got those two guys who are starters and two of the top players on the defense. Trey Turner also out on defense. He would have been the starter in place of Davis had he been healthy. On the other side of the ball, Jordan Duncan. And I can promise you that's what Justin's thinking about, that third and five run. Those are the plays you got to get off the field. And that is where they have been so sound this season, one of the conference's best, so stout in their front seven, that you hesitate for a second against Corbin in these backs. They're going to get out on that edge and move the chains. Ring and pressure this time. Corbin goes right up the middle and gets stopped by Cameron Good, who's racking up the tackles early on for Cal. Ball Pac-12 outside linebacker, one of their best athletes, and getting more and more comfortable. A redshirt junior season out of Spring, Texas. Third and six for Illinois. Another chance for Cal to stop this drive. An empty look here for the first time for Illinois. Against a three-man rush, Peters has all day. He'll run and dive and get a first down inside the 20. You know, we talked last night just about some of the symmetry between these two teams, right? And the two quarterbacks that are very similar, good athletes, capable of doing this on third down. You cover everybody up. There's nowhere to go. You saw Garbers on the other side on the third and five use his legs to maintain that possession and a nice job there by Peters of being patient enough to let that zone expand and go get it. Here comes Williams in motion. Peters steps up, he'll check it down to him and Isaiah Williams makes a couple of men miss and steps out of bounds and you can just see it, can't you? Some guys are different when they get the ball in their hands. And I went down on the field, I just wanted to see him pregame and he's a capable passer, but he was a four-star recruit and one of the best in the country because of his dual threat nature. 
And they do. They just slip right. They just find a way to just feel that defender coming and make him miss. 5'10", 180, and hard to get down. Closing minute here the first quarter on second and eight. Up the middle goes Dre Brown and sets up first and goal. Boy, who are these guys? What a great job by the right tackle, Alex Palczewski. Watch the right tackle right here. Gets a combo block, and then you get to the second level right there. And he actually knocks out Weaver by going through Coin Dang. So, so often those linemen just get stuck on that initial block. The junior, the three-year starter, Palczewski, an awesome job of getting to the second level and taking care of two really good linebackers. Brock, they ran for 14 yards against Northwestern. They've almost got 100 already in this first quarter. As Brown settles for one here. Now, the quarterback makes a big difference. Big difference in that. A, with his ability to run, and then just the confidence that he instills in everybody else. And I think a little bit more creativity as well. You get a whole month to prepare for this scheme. There's an injured player for Cal. And so digging deep into that depth chart early on in this one. Second and goal for Illinois in the 15th play of the drive coming up. Speaking of Redbox, it was awfully fun to spend some time yesterday with their CEO, Galen Smith. Just loves college football, loves being a part of this. So fun when sponsors are just so active not only in their commitment to sponsoring it but then wanting to be here and loving this game of football a run heavy drive for the Illini they'll pass here that is a touchdown for Daniel Barker the hero against Michigan State has a touchdown here in the Red Box Bowl Yeah, they call this a sneak route, right? And once again, it's attacking the edges of the defense. And you're going to see Barker, he's got to sneak through all of this personnel. Right? He cannot get caught up in any of the traffic. You'd love to see that edge defender get a good hand on him to disrupt him. He cannot do it. And instead, Barker finds the end zone. A couple tight ends on both sides of the ball. Making their way into the painted in the end zone. And you wondered, okay, how are you going to make up for all of those receivers, right? How are you going to do it? Well, you're going to run the ball. You're going to have confidence in others. And get your big tight ends involved as well. Got a delay here. Delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still the try down. Seen some cool scheme on both sides. All right, Levy Smith may be a little simplistic on defense, but he's shown a few new wrinkles and Ron Smith offensively, both with his weaponry and his personnel, and then a real mix of movement and run game. A cow on their heels. There's Barker that finished off that epic comeback against Michigan State earlier this season with a touchdown in the final seconds. He's got the first touchdown of this one for Illinois. How about this ratio? 16 catches this year. Four of them for scores. Daniel Barker out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida with a touchdown and a completely different story for the Illinois offense with Brandon Peters back when he compared to the finale of the regular season against Northwestern. Yeah, just 18 minutes of possession time in that debacle of a finale as well. But Levy was certainly excited to flush and have another opportunity and, an, and another game to finish the season off much, much better. Good special teams coverage from Illinois. Stopped at the 16 by Sean Coglin. I don't think there's any question in these 15 minutes you felt both teams desire to be right here. I mean, you wonder, you never know in bowl season, but you can see why that would be the case, right? It's been so long since Illinois has even been in a bowl game, and for Cal, they've not won one since 2015. And I think it's just energy. You just feel it. You feel the players making people miss. You feel the energy on special teams and guys covering kicks. Yeah, no lack of motivation for these two teams. Cal begins this drive with a brown run. 
They'll toppled at the line of scrimmage. And they got a little more than a yard to bring this first quarter to a close. Been an entertaining start to this Red Box Bowl. The Big Ten and the Pac-12. 10-7 Illinois as we go to the second. Welcome back to the 2019 Red Box Bowl on Fox. Joe Davis, Brock Heward, Bruce Feldman getting ready for the second quarter. Stats through a quarter, a little more offense than we had anticipated seeing. I think what everybody anticipated. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody that I saw picking this game that thought we would see one on pace for 40-28 after the first quarter. They're going to nine for Cal and a play action pass to the true freshman Makai Polk. He's got a first down to the 30 as we go down to Bruce. Guys, the Illinois defensive coach is a little frustrated with their guys in the last series. They just recently challenged him and said, look, you guys are doing all these curls. If you don't play harder, we're going to put somebody else in who will. <laughs> it's all about energy, man. If you're going to play this style of defense and really consistently four guys on that D-line, you're asking them to beat the five in front of them. So you can play the zone that you like to play behind it. And if you don't play with tremendous energy, you won't get that done. It's a fly motion you talked about Bo Baldwin liking to use and they hand it off to Brown who broke a couple of tackles and yeah, danced along the sideline before Sidney Brown pushed him out. Yeah, this kid's got a chance to be a real monster his final two years. Got some footing last year as a true freshman. Over 800 yards now as a true sophomore, and you just see that. He does not go down with first contact. One of the best in the country at yards after contact, whether it's the stiff arm or those big powerful legs. 230 pounds future is bright He's played through a shoulder injury much of the year but really benefited from the extra rest time leading up to this bowl game they're hoping for a big day from it and so far so good as he takes it close to midfield and he's already over 80 yards well if Bruce was hearing about a D line that needed more energy this is not a good indicator here these last two snaps credit Cal's group up front I mean, they are getting on to those Illini defenders. It was Curran, the right tackle that time that set the set the pace. And with that group right there, Steve Greatwood's offensive line, you want to see it right off the jump. If they get into that line and give these backs a chance, they're productive. Garber's looking wide side. He's got Polk again, his second catch of this drive. Good looking target there, huh? And then, yes, and then with a little bit of play action, yeah, six foot three, 180 pound, true freshman wide receiver. Pretty remarkable a year ago. It's not many receivers that you see have eight interceptions on the other side of the ball as a high school senior. The guy knows how to play the ball. Native of Richmond, California, enrolled in the spring, had a great spring, had a great fall camp, but it took him a while to get going in the regular season. Garbers looks to throw again. He launches. He's got Polk. And he is unable to hang on. Right through the hands of Polk. Sidney Brown came over at the last moment. Polk couldn't hang on. Well, or did he? Ooh, I think he got a football move, a catch and a football move, him reaching that ball for the pylon. I would totally agree. This is a catch, two feet. He's extending the ball. I, I think you, and obviously replay looks at every single play. I think you're going to have to buzz down and take extra time. Left foot is clearly in. Makes football move. He's extending the ball. He's out of bounds. I don't think he gets near the pylon. So this is not one, I think, that goes the other way for a touchback. I think he's hit before the pylon. And they will take some time. The previous play was ruled as an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. All right, so they're going to take a look at it. And Dean Blandino, you are too. Really interesting play because you're going to see control, the body part down, and then he's going to reach the ball for the goal line, which is a football move. But that right foot appears to step out of bounds. And so the question is going to be, did he complete the catch before that right foot is out of bounds? And that's going to be that's what they're going to have to look at here. So he completes the catch there, right? The left foot. He has so it's control body part and then time to do something with it. He's starting to reach there. The right foot steps out of bounds. I like this as a catch. I think he does enough in bounds to make it a catch. I don't see enough to make it a score because again that right foot is out before the ball is going to make it to the pylon. I'd agree with that. 
So the football move, essentially, your chance to make a football move, it ends when he steps on the sideline, Dean? Yeah, you've got to do all of that inbounds, okay. and, that, and that's the key. So, so here, again, I think he's starting to reach before he steps out, and he's going to complete that, that process there, and then he steps out before the ball actually breaks the plane of the goal line. And Cal felt like they were going to be able to take some shots down the field. And that was Sidney Brown at safety there, and he's got deep half. And he doesn't try and quite get over to After it. After review, it was a catch. The player stepped out of bounds at the one-yard line. It's first and goal for California at the one-yard line. So they do overturn it. First and goal on Polk's third catch of this drive. And here's what I'm talking about. Here's Sidney Brown at safety. He has got deep half here to take away the vertical. But unfortunately, as this play evolves, you can see he doesn't get all the way there. And Chase sees that once you see this much room and that safety not outside the numbers, you're going to take the shot. And you're going to believe in your true freshman to go get it done and finish on the other end. Just a lapse of some fundamental concentration right there to get over the top of that vertical. So first and goal, and Christopher Brown straight downhill. He got tripped up, and he's short. That was Mr. Harding right in the middle, the guy who we talk about in the open. All right, he does not sit and wait and hesitate. And because of it, he can get into that backfield, and that's the only shot he's got. He's given up some size, and he's given up some strength to Christopher Brown, so you better go hit him early. And that's exactly what the All-Big Ten performer and the second leading tackler in America got done. So it's second and goal. They'll sneak it this time, and Garbers is in. Back and forth we go here in the Red Box Bowl as Cal retakes the lead. Offensive explosion. It's in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest, man. I don't know why more people don't do that. I think you're going to see it. All these staffs study everything in the offseason. I think the number of times you see QB sneaks effective. Bo Baldwin giving some love to the true freshman. But now with that rule of being able to push the quarterback in as a little short motion, all you got to do is get started. and You're going to get the aid of your buddies around you. That play works more often than not. Extra point is there, and it's 14-10. It was an 84-yard drive. 63 of the 84 yards came on receptions from Makai Polk. And then on second and goal, Garbers plunges in, and the Golden Bears are back in front. Dele Harding, the quarterback of the defense, trying to get everybody aligned. Look at him. He's talking to Kalen Olson. This is right before that snap. Still trying to get everybody on the same page. And unfortunately, if those face masks aren't forward and the cleats aren't in the ground, you got no chance. In short yardage, Chase Garbers feels it. He can feel that defense still trying to communicate. And sneaks his way in for a touchdown. Capping off an 84-yard touchdown drive. Makai Polk, the star on that possession. 14-10 Cal looking for their first bowl win since 2015. There's a short kick taken by Dre Brown. Brown gets tripped up crossing the 30. Time now for More Than a House, sponsored by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Levi's Stadium opened in 2014. Home of the 49ers. It's hosted the Pac-12 championship game each year. It's posted the this bowl game each season since it opened. Super Bowl 50, Broncos win against the Panthers. Championship game last year, Dabo Sweeney and Clemson with a win against Alabama. Although the largest crowd it's ever hosted, WrestleMania 31, 76,976. Just believe that. <laughs> Don't give me too hype. No. WWE. Big in the <laughs> Heward household. Play clock winding down and out. Delay a game on the offense, number 18. Five yard penalty remains first. Uh, kind of the, the penalty that's in vogue the last couple of days, son. Delays. Yeah. yeah. And you see that look from Lovey like, really? You coming out of a kickoff? You should have the first play. And I know you do some check with me, but I guarantee you. That's some of the calm reassurance the conversation right there is that can't happen again. One of those RPO plays 
flag is down as Navarro makes the catch. And Donnie Navarro goes to the 45. Toa, Eloa, and Good combining the tackle. It'll be an interesting call here. Yeah, a lot of hand fighting between both receiver Navarro, and that's Anusium again, the redshirt freshman corner. Pass interference on the defense, number seven. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. And the line, I love this. They love that little RPO game. You can see it. They're both hand fighting there. I'm, I'm going to use what Dean Blandino said and said, I got that as a non call. <laughs> yeah. I got that as a catch last time. I got that as a non call. Both of them just playing football. Brett Johnson, the true freshman, knows. Megan, the tackle there, along with Ben Hawk Schrider, who's back in the game after leaving with an injury. This is a, it's a beautiful human right here, isn't it? Brett Johnson, a nose who defensive coordinator Tim DeRuder says doesn't say much. He just kind of grunts at you, just like you want your nose to be. And that's why he got a caveman club for Christmas. <laughs> Amazing. And carried it everywhere with him. So second and ten from the 45. Off play action. Peters has time. He wants Washington who couldn't pull it in. Just off of the fingertips. He had beaten Bynum but couldn't pull it in and it's third and ten. Good play action keeps the safeties a bit flat footed in order to get the throw behind the safety 32 here. Scott the play action does it. You get the post right behind it and a near spectacular fingertip catch. That Washington just can't quite corral. Snapping a run of five straight completions for Peters. One effort. Both quarterbacks, both offenses impressive so far. Blitz is picked up and then the throw too tall for Washington. Defended by Anusium and it's fourth down. Yeah, and you see on that third down, really the second down as well. Like, okay, we're not going to let Illinois get in the rhythm. And that's a six man pressure right there. That's place a man to man. Get back to trusting the physicality out on the edges. And bringing some extra people to re to remind Illinois that they've not been an offense that has looked much like what we've seen through the first 19 minutes of this game. A little bit more pressure from Deruder and staff on that possession. Romeo to return the punt from the best in the Big Ten, Blake Hayes. His parents made the trip from Australia for this one. Goes out of bounds around the 15. That's where Cal will be back on offense, leading this Red Box Bowl here on Fox. An opportunity on Friday to go to Alcatraz, one of the most popular tourist attractions here. Trivia question for you How many people successfully escaped Alcatraz? Not even going to venture again. Three, three. You nailed it. Seriously? Sweet. I, I bet the. I bet somebody <laughs> has access to your ears that has the answers. You're right. Three in 1962. Old Frank Morris, John, and Clarence England did it. Here's Christopher Brown Jr. who gets met in the hole and driven down by Kalen Tolson, who's taken over the starting role for the injured Jake Hansen. Yeah, you saw a little more spirited effort by Cal defensively on that last possession, and this is what the Illini want to do. They don't want to catch people. They're at their very best when they are attacking, especially at that second level. Be it Eifler, that time Tolson, Harding, those guys have got to be going forward. Garbers has been feeling it, second and ten. He's given time over the middle. He's got another completion. That's eight in a row, and that's Keikoa Crawford, the Michigan transfer, who they think has an opportunity, finally healthy, to have a nice day. Oh, he's got a little bit more juice. Right? He's got some of that burst. He's a four-star kid coming out of high school when he went to Michigan, and that was pure man-to-man -man coverage that time, and you got one job on an in-cut as a receiver, and that is cross the face of the corner. That time, Witherspoon, give your quarterback an opportunity to deliver. And Garbers does. Guy that has caught passes from Illinois quarterback Brandon Peters at Michigan. Catches one here from Garbers. Gets him a first down. Brown. 
down and hit in the backfield and dropped by Dele Harding, the nation's second leading tackler, who wasn't even a starter until this season. This is a guy that was mostly a special teams player. Granted, he was the captain of the special teams unit, but didn't get his first true opportunity until this season. And boy, is he taking full advantage. He's about six foot, 230 pounds. Welcome to the new age of linebackers that can just run and read and react. He and Weaver do it a little bit differently. Weaver, the converted DN, he likes to analyze before he goes, not hardy. He loves to sift through that traffic like that and finish tackles. They get it second and 12. Back to the ground, Marcel Dancy. His first carry takes it inside the, or across the 30. And it'll be third down. And one of the other stories today is Steve Greatwood, the O-line coach, a great recruited me a couple decades ago. He's been doing this for four decades. He's finishing his career. That's just an O-line guy through and through. And he's set to retire, made that announcement this week. Truly one of the gems of college football, one of the best at developing offensive lines, and does a fine job, and has done a fine job here for three years at Cal. As Bears looking at a third and six with a 14-10 lead here in the second quarter. Garber's getting chased from behind. And Harding is there to push him out of bounds. Fourth down. Well, Chase may have got him on the QB sneak, but not this time. Not this linebacker sideline to sideline. Watch Dele. He sizes it up the entire way. And that's the advantage of being a 4-5, 4-6 guy, is being able to finish those tackles and keep Garbers away from the first down. This is a little more like we anticipated. The team's trade punts. The defense is making some plays. And here's Steven Coots. Navarro back to return it. Dies inside the 20. It's a punt of 50 yards for Coots and then a little bit of shoving after the play here in the Red Box Bowl. Anywhere can be the LSU right now. I in mean, New Orleans. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine that scene? Oh, that was some show Joe Burrow put on. Seven touchdowns in the first half. Rayvon Bonner gets stopped by Cameron Good. Yeah, my little brother is on staff at Texas A&M, and I was chatting with him. And he's not one for hyperbole, and he said they played LSU. LSU just, you know, gashed them as well. He said never seen a quarterback elevate people around him like Burrow ever in his career. Hmm. Just the amount of confidence and belief when he stepped on that field was unlike anything he's experienced. Back to Bonner, third and short for Illinois as Good gets another tackle. And back to run, run to try to set up a real manageable third down here. Well, they've been in a hurry all day. Right back in the ball for this third and two play. And right back to the ground. Dre Brown a first down. In the arms of Jalen Hawkins. He gets eight to the 36. So pretty cool statement, right? Back and forth. Previous drive, Cal was able to heat it up. Get him in a third down, bring some pressure. This time, third and two, not so much. Get back to you, what you want to try to do, and that is dictate first with the run game, and then the RPO and the shots off of it. Not wasting any time again. It's Brown again. Stopped this time by Coin Dane. Trey Brown, a fifth-year senior from DeKalb, Illinois, who missed his first two and a half years. Two and a half years without playing. Two torn ACLs, two torn MCLs, a stress fracture, and four surgeries later, he made his Illinois debut after two and a half years. Wow. He's got it again here, and he's stopped by Ben Hawk Schreider, third down. There's a nice play on the edge by the kid from Berkeley, California. A dream come true for Ben Hawk Schreider to come back, earned a scholarship in August, and a dream to play a finale here of his college career with the Bears. On third and three, Peters floating for Washington out of his reach, but a flag flies. They're going to get Cameron Bynum to extend the drive. What do you think? Well, they called it earlier, and if you called it earlier, I need consistency. Pass interference on the defense, number 24. It's a 15-yard penalty. Results in a first down. And I think what you're going to see is just grabbing that arm, grabbing that right arm and never allowing the receiver right free to go get it. Now, I was watching Washington in warm-ups. It's a really cool drill they were working on as they were running to just slap the arms away to really get that idea that Cal's going to be handsy. 
They're going to be in your chest, and you've got to fight to get them off of you. Well, that time, Bynum, I think because of just the consistent grabbing of that arm, grabs a penalty flag. Instead of fourth down, first down at the 42 in Cal Territory. Reggie Corbin back in. He's stopped by Daniel Scott, who's making his first career start today with Ashton Davis and Trey Turner both out. Pasadena native has played some big minutes down the stretch. Big interception against Stanford. And at least pre-snap, a little pressure look here and a check with me by the Illini. Let's see if Cal checks out of that pressure look. And bring six, forcing Peters back. Able to get rid of it over the head of the and center receiver Stampley, Dang and Scott applying most of the pressure. And they did not check out of that pressure. They brought the safety look off the edge here. And you're going to see Daniel Scott. He's going to come. You've got enough protection, but Peters doesn't like the pocket. He bails out. And this is one of the advantages of being six foot five and 220 pounds. Even with people bearing down on you to get rid of the football. Third down and eight. And a little more pressure and a little bit more man to man in the last couple defensive possessions. Corbin swings out underneath Washington has no chance Daniel Scott read it well and it's fourth down he sure did and that is a red shirt sophomore that has been itching for this opportunity I like this call versus pressure and you're going to see Scott right here All right this is a one on one situation if you can get that block and get that done you have an opportunity but Scott reads it perfectly goes right to where that quick little screen pass was going to go. And Peters knows it. Risk return on that play. You got one shot. And that defense plays it well. You're punting. Hawkins and Hermigio both back. Hayes sends it away. One of the best in the country at pinning teams deep. And he's done it again. So many times this season, a Hayes punt has led to one of those turnovers. Third in the country in takeaways. And Hayes has had a hand in several of those backing teams up inside their own 10. 14 first time this bowl game was played here Christian McCaffrey in Stanford took down Maryland 45 21 he had some pretty good bowl games that Mr. McCaffrey did he's uh, kept having some pretty good games since he is just such a baller just a guy that truly catches it as well as he runs it entertaining game so far tight game between Cal and Illinois 14 10 520 left to go in this first half of Chase Garbers and the Bears backed inside their own five but the Garbers throw out of his own end zone with one on one down the sideline Crawford but out of bounds and the coverage from the true freshman Devin Witherspoon and a nice job there by Witherspoon to use that extra defender your job as a corner is to get that receiver right to the boundary it's the receivers job to not get pushed if you're Kakoa Crawford there you want to stay what's on called a red line right you'll see that on some practice fields of teams right between the numbers and the boundary and you just want to stay on that line to give your QB room you get pushed to the boundary you got no chance On second and ten. Try to get some room with Brown, but he can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And again, Brock, it's Devin Witherspoon. Talk about on Cal's side, some guys taking advantage of opportunities. How about Witherspoon making his first career start in place of the injured Tony Adams? Yeah, you're going to play in Lovey's system, and he told us point blank, is a corner, you're going to tackle. You don't tackle, you don't play for me. And whether that was with the Buccaneers or the Bears, no matter where Lovey's been in this scheme, that edge defender is oftentimes those corners, and they got to come bring it. And Witherspoon did. Trying to take advantage of the punt from Hayes. Take control of the field position battle. Third down, 10. Illinois bringing pressure. Garbers steps into it. On the corner out, Remigio! He's got it! What a throw, what a catch! 25 yards, first down. And Lovey Smith is looking at it the entire way. This corner broad's going to come right into Lovey's lap. I love the air that Chase puts on that ball and gives Nico an opportunity to go run under. Does he gather control? <laughs> wow. Mm. 
The ruling on the field was a completed pass. The previous play is under further review. And you can see Romeo is still down. I think that knocked the, the wind right out of him as he used every bit of energy to go get it. The ball can hit the ground, but the ground cannot be used to gain control of that reception. So does that ball move? Does he lose control as he makes contact with the ground, or does he do a remarkable job of keeping this ball without movement and control all the way through? Dean Blandino, what do you see? Yeah, I'm looking at that left hand. He does appear to have control. He lands in bounds. And now you use the word move, and that's important. Does it just move within his control, or does he lose control? The ruling on the field was a catch. There's definitely some movement. I don't see enough to say that's a After loss review, of control. The ruling on the field stands. First down, California. So Dean nails it, and Dean, if we continue through this bowl season like this much longer, you're going to have great job security. <laughs> My gosh. Well, I, I appreciate that. These, it's, it's, I listen to you guys first, and I just piggyback on what you say. <laughs> Do you mind yeah. if I steal your verbiage of, you know, I got that as a stance. I got that yeah. as a catch. Good. I like that. There'll be a charge in the mail. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. All right, so heck of a play. What a oh, throw there by Chase got, Garbers, huh? I got that about as good a third and 10-plus conversion as you're going to see. And a big one. Moving it out of the shadow with their own goal post to the 28. He looks to throw again. Just before the pressure gets home, he finds Tonjes, who's got his second catch. Ten catches total during the regular season and two long ones here in this first half. Any quarterback out there knows there's one refrain that receivers, tight ends, that you always hear. Just give me a chance. Coming back to the huddle, how many times quarterbacks here just give me a chance? And that's exactly what Garbers has done to Remigio, and that's a beautiful catch from Ton just going up and getting it. So first down of the 46. Garber's looking to throw again. Makai Polk over the shoulder. Inside the 30. It's big time. Right, we talk about that red line. Stay on that red line. Don't run yourself out of bounds. An inside release on that vertical route helps, but it gives Chase Garber's all that room to the sidelines to go and get it done. How about the explosion from the Bears in the passing game this quarter? Chase Garber is now 11 of 13. Here's Brown. With a seam to the 22. This is the Chase Garbers you saw at Ole Miss. He played his best game. It was a remarkable game at Ole Miss. He really did not miss a throw as they went down there and won in the final seconds down in Oxford. And it was the following week that he had the injury to the shoulder. It was the following week, just as he was really, we, we had them against Oregon, and you could feel it from Bo and Justin and the staff, like such a bummer because the game was slowing down because he was playing so aggressively and confidently. This is what he looked like in September. 357, four touchdowns in that win against Ole Miss. Short carry here for Deshaun Collins. Delano Ware with a tackle, third and short. Two and a half minutes left in this first half. Garber's ready to much different story in this bowl game than his first one in the Cheese It Bowl last year. Loss 10 7, where he was intercepted three times. And really good so far in this one. It looked to add to this good day. Down the sideline, Polk again. First and goal for Cal on Polk's fifth catch of this first half. And a little bit hobbled getting up after Brown brought him down. Well, the one thing Sidney Brown will do is he will come over and he will hit you, but this is two times now vertically down the field. The true freshman has got the better. That is cover two. That corner is coming up and playing press coverage, counting on that safety to get behind it and take that vertical away. But receiver and quarterback are doing the damage. 5 for 105. Both those are already career highs for Polk. And it's first and goal from the five yard line. Garber's looking in zone. Gets rid of it just in time to the corner and incomplete. 
Trayvon Clark the intended receiver there is a flag. I love the aggressive mindset of Cal today. Pass interference on the defense number 30. The ball will be placed at the two yard line first down. Black, what's Bo Baldwin got to lose. That's right. Yeah. And it's going to be Sidney Brown that's coming over here. They're going to call this contact right there before. And I think that's the right call. We've seen it on the other side. Been consistent with that pass interference. If you impede the receiver's opportunity through early contact, you're going to draw the penalty on both sides today. No first and goal again. Here comes Brown. Met in the backfield and then swarmed. It was Dele Harding there first. No surprise. None at all. And there's a reason we got the number one and number two tacklers in America in this game because Evan Weaver and Dele Harding believe in themselves. They trust their eyes as seniors that have played a bunch of ball and then they don't hesitate. Both those guys with four today. Those are modest totals for those two. There'll be more to come. Mm -hmm. The average post 15 per game. Watch that play action pass. So effective down here. And motion Brown out. Garber's straight drop. Too tall for Crawford. And it's third down. Saw the play action earlier. The touchdown to the tight end. A little surprised they didn't go back to there for Bo Baldwin. But you're right, he's got nothing to lose. This is his finale. You got 30 minutes and 44 seconds left as a coordinator of Chase Garbers in this offense, and he's letting it rip this afternoon. And facing a defense here, Brock, that's been one of the best in the country in the red zone. Third and goal on a drive that started back at the Cal three. They're going to use a timeout here, their first one. Coming up at the half, stay tuned. Rob Stone and the guys for the State Farm Halftime Show. Going over bowl game highlights across the country, previewing the national title game. Here we've got a third and goal. And a drive that started back at the Cal 3. And you got press man-to-man, one-on-ones across the board. Remigio comes in motion. Garbers keeps it foot in the ground and down. It's fourth and goal as Isaiah Gay makes the stop. And that's really well played by defensive end, by linebackers, man to man outside. So all eyes are on the quarterback, that run game, and that front seven. And they're disciplined, and they finish. And I think if you're Cal, you've got to take these points. Lovey Smith uses timeout 29 seconds. There was no indication of the field goal team coming out yet, but I'm with you. I mean, this is not exactly close. It's fourth and goal from the three. And you're a team this season that's, you know, averaged just over 20 points a game. And it feels a lot different going into a locker room. I know there's still 20 some seconds left, but up a touchdown. Then given that group on the other side, if they make a stop here down just four and the Illini will get the ball to begin the second half. Doesn't look like they're going to no, go. No, it doesn't. Yeah, offense coming out. And I think Justin's saying, go for it, Bo. It's going to be your final time calling plays for me here before you're down at Cal Poly. And let's be aggressive. A lot of times you come into games, all the time you come into games with a two point play. Maybe you use it here on fourth and goal from the three yard line. Swings out, one man to beat, he does! And on fourth and goal, a Chris Brown touchdown. That's a really well-designed and well-conceived play. The short motion for Justin Wilcox and Bo Baldwin does enough to create a natural pick play. And when you get man-to-man -man coverage, and they showed it the previous snap of what you were going to get, it's not always rub routes to the receivers, but it's using those receivers as shields to get your big back out on the edge with leverage to finish. 
But it had to beat a very good runner in Kalen Tolson. Able to just get around him and get it inside the pylon. Extra point from Greg Thomas is good. Longest touchdown drive of the season for Cal. 97 yards finishes off with this. You know, Joe, we talked about this short little motion, right, and, and, and how it helps probe a defense. You know what else it helps? It helps hide this pick play. Okay, if Makai pokes out here, you're not running the pick play. You know what? And if he lined up here, these guys are probably communicating and saying, hey, watch that rub, watch that pick. Instead, it's a short motion. And because of that, well, that defense doesn't have time to react and get out front. You lose leverage, you lose contain, touchdown. It's the advantages. You saw it last night. The guy that coaches in this building, Kyle Shanahan, is one of the best at doing just this. Just little motions, little shifts. It's not just window dressing for fun. It is really trying to hold that defense, not allow them to play downhill, and instead use a pick play to your success. Garbers 13 of 16, 194 and two touchdowns. And again, a year ago in the bowl game loss to TCU, not good. No touchdowns, three interceptions. Much different story here in the first half different of this one. Yeah. Different confidence in people around him as well. Fair catch taken on this kick, and Illinois will have it at the 31. I mean, he's just been been on it. And, you know, I think from the onset, you saw a guy that's pretty confident with the tools he has around him, and they basically all return next year. You're going to return 10 starters, the entire offensive line. You know, I like the thing that Justin Wilcox said about Cal and whatever his next coordinator is going to be. He said he's going to have a, a group with some high intellect. You know, to go to Cal Berkeley and, and to go to school here, you're able to process and handle lots of formations, lots of plays, lots of movement. Chase Garbers and this crew has done so very well in the first half. But are going to go for it? It looks like see what they can do here, and they complete it to Daniel Barker. First down to open the drive. It was a very good start to this game for Brandon Peters, but that completion there snapped a string of four consecutive incompletions. Another kicker, James McCord, one of the biggest legs in college football. Back for Barker. He's got it. What a first half for Daniel Barker. And with nine seconds, Illinois has it inside the 20. And what a throw. <laughs> These quarterbacks today are putting on a show. I mean, there is no window there to get that ball into, but that's the advantage of having a tight end. And that's Daniel Scott that's in the game. It's safe. You can't cover better. He is right in the lap. But Joe, you're a former quarterback, and you know a perfect throw can even beat elite coverage. Brock, two timeouts, nine seconds. He can even think about the end zone here. You just got to be smart and do not overextend the play. Yeah, and I think this is a good timeout for everybody on the field to remind them of just that. Still one left for Levy Smith. Oh, the NFC. Wild card game with the Vikings and the Saints. The NFL postseason is here. Sunday on Fox, all starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific. Fox in the Fox Sports app. Who do you like? Yeah, I, I like a lot of Kirk Cousins' season, just not in prime time, unfortunately. And Drew Brees makes throws that we just saw on the regular. I mean, those just pinpoint precision throws at 40 years of age, he is still nails. Those 49ers will not play in the opening weekend. What a huge, huge season changing win for them last night, changing their potential path to a Super Bowl. Do not take a sack. Do not overextend this play. If you're short of the sticks, you've got to have awareness and make sure you get down and call a timeout. From the 20 with nine seconds, Peters quickly for Navarro, who spins out of bounds with four seconds, and you got to do it now, don't yes. you? You got to kick now. Yep. Yeah, and here comes James McCourt. And I think all set up here, by the way, by that little pooch kick kickoff. A little surprised to not see Cal try to drive that ball deep. Instead, the pooch kick, favorable field position, a dime from Brandon Peters. And McCourt will have a chance to make this a one score game. Yeah, they had it at the 31 yard line, 25 seconds. And here they are with a 30 yard attempt for the junior from Parkland, Florida to make it a one possession game at halftime of the Red Box Bowl.
21 13 we get you to Rob Stone and the guys in Los Angeles for the State Farm halftime show. the 2019 Red Box Bowl on Fox in Santa Clara on a gorgeous day for football as we wind down 2019 pretty offensive first half both these teams over 200 yards of offense as we get ready for half number two Joe and Brock that was a really entertaining first half play yeah raise your hand if you anticipated over 30 points and over 500 30 yards, yards. yeah offense. more than 30 <laughs> yards but no not this How about 500 yards plus between yeah. these two combined and the two quarterbacks have been as advertised two middle linebackers have shown up it'll be always fun in these bowl games you've seen a very aggressive mindset from Cal offensively so how does Illinois on the other side you know make some adjustments defensively to offset a bunch of just aggressive vertical plays down the field in that first half and Brandon Peters was equally as good the leading rusher for the Illini in fact and, and a wonderful field goal leading drive right before halftime trying to get the old two for one here getting a field goal before the break and having the ball to open the second half here comes Dre Brown good special teams coverage for Cal all day so far and take a look at some of the highlights of those quarterbacks producing those stat lines we showed I'm not seen a half played like that by Chase in his career. I mean, he was nearly flawless, 13 to 16, 194 yards, two touchdowns. I love the ability to push the ball down the field, not just screens and short intermediate passes. The vertical threat in that first half was dominant. And Brandon on the other side, I thought also, did a nice job of getting rid of the ball. He ran when he had to, and this was about as good as it gets. We're in an NFL stadium. That's an NFL precision throw of using his eyes, scanning the field, and setting up that field goal right at the end of the half. Second half opens with a Reggie Corbin run. They get shut down by Zionde Johnson. Down to Bruce Feldman. Joe, both these defensive-minded head coaches, happy with their offenses, very frustrated with their defenses. Justin Wilcox said, hey, we got to tackle better. It's not complicated. Kated. It's leverage. We got to get off the field on third downs. And Brock, if you want to know the adjustment from Lovey Smith, he already told me. He said, they're playing us, man. We're going to play them, man. Let's see who's better at playing man in the second half. All right. Second down, 11. Back to Corbin. And not a whole lot of room. And quickly third down on Illinois' opening drive of the second half. Cameron Bynum the tackle. Well, there's back-to-back -back tackles with not just one Golden Bear, but multiple Golden Bears. And that's what great tackling teams do. I think so that's probably the frustration of the head coach that he reiterated to Bruce to just tackle a bit better. Two good run stops setting up a third and seven. It was actually Chigaze Anusium with a tackle. Elijah Hicks was there as well. Third down seven for Illinois. Well, it's man in the first half. This is a zone look here on third and seven from Cal. They bring four and get home to Peters, knocking it loose. Ball is still free. Who's got it? No turnovers in that first half. I think Palcheski is in a wrestling match for that football and ultimately saves the day. The right tackle jumping back in. It was Zionde Johnson that knocked it away from Peters. It looked like Good came out with it, but they are going to give Illinois possession. Yeah, that zone coverage, just a four-man rush, and it's right off the jump. All right, movement on that Illini offensive line. You've slid your left guard to center, and that time it's all off the jump. Johnson gets his hands into Jake Cerny right at the beginning, right at the onset. Cerny cannot catch up, and then the mat scramble for the football, and ultimately good. Palczewski getting the wrestling match. Like a wet bar of soap squeezing around there. First three and out of the game, and now Nico Remigio on the return to the 45. Sean Coughlin, another special teams tackle. One of the adjustments, and, and that's interesting that Bruce got that nugget from Coach Smith about playing more man, is their zone wasn't great. 
And I think part of the reason it wasn't great is there was no Stanley Green defensively for the Illini. So Chase Garbers was looking at a secondary with some moving pieces. We saw Sidney Brown not get over the top on some of those vertical shots down the field. And I think that's the proper adjustment. If you can't contain that, those shots down the field and zone, you got to be a little more aggressive and get up into that man-to-man -man coverage. They did not contain Kell in that first half. 273 yards is 50 yards shy of their game average. Play action and looking over the top, underthrown and incomplete. It was Keikoa Crawford running deep. Jamal Milan applying the pressure, second and ten. And it was a good thing there was some pressure because I think initially Garbers has this throw down the field. Again, that aggressive mindset and sticking to it offensively. But that pressure forced Garbers to move up in the pocket and then ultimately allow the coverage to recover. Yeah, you're right. He had him. If he'd been able to cut it loose earlier. Now to the fourth incompletion of the game for the sophomore from Newport Beach. And second and ten from the 44. Chris Brown ran for 84 yards in the first half. Able to turn the corner here and cross midfield. And see where they spot him. He's close to the first down. Yeah, this big man is not just a between the tackles back. We saw the touchdown reception earlier and then ultimately breaks the containment right there. That that's the play for a defensive coordinator. That's Eifler, the linebacker there. His job to keep containment on Brown. He could not. And the big back moves the chains. So first down at the Illinois 46. Back to the air with Garbers. Letting it fly again. Wants Polk. Incomplete coverage from Hobbs. Polk had a monster first half, and they were looking for the freshman again, but Hobbs, good coverage. Yeah, over 100 yards received in that first half, and three of them were on the safety. Instead, of that safety over the top, you keep your best cover corner, and that's Hobbs. Step for step, right waistband to waistband. You can't do it any better than that. But, boy, you think Chase Garbers trusted Makai Polk at all? You think he's looking forward to the next couple seasons? And he told us the other day he can't wait to see what Makai Polk can become. Get a full offseason at the college level under his belt. Pack on some weight. 6'3", 185 right now. There's a timeout for Illinois. Illinois. We'll take the timeout with them early on here in the second half. Game Saturday morning. Both these teams took place in some community service activities downtown San Francisco. The Illini were at St. Anthony's Dining Room. The Bears were at Glide Memorial Church and Kitchen. Well, part of what makes this bowl experience special for them. Illinois in its first bowl game since 2014, looking for its first bowl win since 2011. Cal back to back bowl trips, but looking for the first bowl win since 2015. Here's Brown making a man miss and getting a first down inside the 35, moving over 100 yards on the afternoon. And that man he made miss is the second best tackler in college football. That's a one on one with Dele Harding right in the hole right there. It's a lot of shake for a 230 pounder. I mean, you can just see that he's got a little extra juice. And you talked about it earlier, just that month off. He battled an AC joint, a shoulder injury most of the season. And just everything looks good, feels good. When those two things happen, well, you can play good. Normally, you talk about that, uh, when you're talking about like nice wristbands and cool uniforms. And this play gets blown up. Able to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage and then show off some of the power and turn a loss of a few into a gain of a few. <laughs> That's a good old fashioned rugby scrum. And an injured Illinois player. It's Milo Eifler. Let's say Berkeley native started his college career at Washington and transferred to Illinois sat out last season. So first year of action with the Illini one of six power five transfers that has started multiple games this year for him. As Lovey Smith said just watch the semifinals and all of the influence of grad transfers and other transfers. It's a new age of college football and Illinois is taking advantage of it. Play 
action on second down. Garbers drops it into a window. That is pulled in. It's Tonjes for his third catch today. 22 yards and first and goal. Tonjes yet to get up. And he's on the outside making that love that combination. That's a two tight end vertical combination. And again, while Illinois wants to play more man, they go back to zone. That is Sidney Brown who's trying to dislodge Tonjes from the football. He can't do it. As they take a look at Tonjes, we'll take another break. Jake Tonjes to his feet was trying to get back into the game already. They saying, hold on. He's got his third catch today after he had 10 catches during the regular season. Yeah, led the Bears this year at just under 20 yards a catch, and he doesn't mind going up and getting it. And it's a different guy. I mean, this this Chase Garber is from one year ago, and that cheese a bowl, not even the same quarterback. Got it first down and goal. He'll loft it to the end zone. That is caught by Crawford, but he was laying out of bounds. There is a flag down and pass interference coming up. Pass interference on the defense, number eight. The foul Curdy in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. First down. I think Nate Hobbs is pleading his case saying he's got his hands all over me as well. But we have seen this now on four occasions clearly out of bounds when Kokoa catches it. But on four occasions they have called it on both sides. Right or wrong right and we, we've called games this year Joe where they don't call that one time where they let those guys go at it and fight back and forth. But they have been consistent with this call throughout. Moves it right to the two. Three tight ends in the game for Cal. That includes Tonjus back from the injury. Fake to Brown, rolling to the flats and throwing for another one of those tight ends. This time, Gavin Reinwald gets involved. So sneaky in these formations. And the little sneak concept again from Ryan Wald. He's in a fullback spot, but he's got to sneak through underneath the line of scrimmage. The heavy play, run action away. The defenders, the linebackers, all eyes geared up for the heavy run. And Chase Garbers, have yourself an afternoon. Third touchdown for Garbers on 15 of 20. And it's to everybody. Right. He's getting everybody involved. Yeah, three touchdowns are to the running back, Christopher to Brown, to the second tight end, Gavin Reinwald, to the third tight end, Colin Moore. And they've extended the lead to two touchdowns. Let's take a look at postcards from Fansville, sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. A lot of Cal fans here, with us just being about 45 miles from Berkeley and the Cal campus. That said, there are a lot of Illinois fans as well. Big alumni base here. It's great engineering school at Illinois, and a lot of folks have moved out here to Silicon Valley. 19,000 Illinois grads living in the Bay Area, which is the second largest population base of Illinois grads outside of just Chicago. It was a hype pep rally yesterday, I'll tell you that. I heard there was a great pep rally leader making it hype. Dre Brown spun around and then pop shy of the 20. It's the second time now we showed it earlier on the QB sneak of just Illinois trying to communicate and also look at Cal here with all of their pre snap movement. All right. They're going to shift. They're going to line up one way. You call the swap and go into the other formation and look at all the movement of those defenders. Now most importantly watch Daly Harding right here trying to communicate and at the snap he still is barely able to get his eyes back into that play action. They know what to expect. You know you're going to get a lot of movement, a lot of shifts out of this offense, but trying to get it communicated and get everybody on the same page has been difficult for the Illini. Isaiah Williams saw him use him in this role a couple times during the first half. We've happened to just be joining us. He is their third quarterback, one of the quarterbacks of the future, but just trying to get anybody with playmaking ability the ball in their hands with the issues they're having with injuries. Used him as slot receiver, thrown it to him once, given it to him on the jet sweep a couple times. Second and seven for Illinois. Trey Brown. 
third down. This feels like a big possession for Illinois. With all those bodies down offensively, you've got to stay within reach. Right? And I like the commitment to the run. There's no panic. You're now in a very manageable third down situation, but Lovey knows it. Cannot afford a three and out and put the defense right back on the field right now. And again, just a four man rush look. Cal content to play some zone. It looks like behind it. Third down four. Peters. Good coverage downfield. He's trying to keep it alive. He lost one for Trenard Davis. The seniors' first catch of the season is a big third down pickup. That is so good. Brandon Peters wanted to go. He saw zone coverage. He wanted to throw a quick little option route at the sticks. Travion Beck jumped that route. He jumps it right there. That's going to be a pick if he throws it. The wherewithal to extend the play. And this is really good. Falling away. Peters made some big time throws himself this afternoon. Well, Davis, who had 40 catches over his first few years in Illinois, has his first one this year. Over the top, there is Navarro into Cal territory. Another perfect strike from Brandon Peters. This one for 29. You know what I like about Peters for a big guy? I love just how poised he is in the pocket. Watch him, watch his balance, and then he throws just a dart to Navarro, who's working across all of that zone coverage. Just a beautiful frozen rope and a beautiful response by Illinois. Pressure coming out of the secondary. Peters rolling in that direction. Now he will heave it out of bounds. Travion Beck trigger him with the pressure second and ten a lot of times bigger quarterbacks get a little bit loose with their fundamentals right you think I can just sling it and I'm 6'5 225 very talented but you can see a real hyper focus both in high school I think Jim Harbaugh Michigan Pep Hamilton that's continued here at Illinois with Rod Smith a real focus to stay compact in his delivery and I think the more compact you are the more consistent you can be as well Grew up in Avon, Indianapolis, or Indiana, near Indianapolis, cheering for the Colts, playing imaginary games in the yard, wearing a Peyton Manning jersey. And wearing Peyton's number 18, looking a little bit like him, chucking around on this drive as Corbin loses but a half yard, and it's third down. Luke Beckett making the tackle for Cal. He sure did, and so did Evan Weaver right behind, and those two seniors are buddies. And Beckett slowed down. Corbin Weaver comes and does what he does best, and that goes and finishes tackles. Just a heavy-handed dude, man. When he gets his hands on you, you go down. Picked up third down already on this drive to Trenard Davis here on third and ten. Peters steps up, lets it go into coverage this time, and incomplete over the head of Daniel Barker. Coverage from Hicks and Hawkins. And there's nowhere to go. I mean, you can't cover it much better than this. Look at them have eyes on the routes. They know the concept that is coming. That is well studied. That's your preparation and ultimately the execution to get it done. Nowhere to go. Well, this is within the range of James McCord, but down two touchdowns. Kind of an in-between spot. And they'll keep the offense out there at the 34, fourth and 10. Cal shows pressure. They didn't get it off. Delay a game on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Wow. Now you get a punt. Yeah, and you'd burn the earlier timeout, right? Defensively. And at fourth and 15, I think you do have to punt here. The third delay penalty today. And that time it was that bare front. It was that pressure look. Cal was going to play cover zero and bring blitz. And as they were deciphering and working through that protection wise at the line of scrimmage, that play clock went to zero. So they bring Hayes on. Romijo and Hawkins go back. Hayes takes his time for the coverage team to get down there and drops it to the 11. So Cal with a two touchdown lead in command right now with the ball after this. Move. And they stalled and 
looking at going for it on fourth down at the lay. They punt, and so Cal back on offense. What has been a really impressive day for Chase Garbers. Christopher Brown is over 100 yards on the ground, and it's another career game for Makai Polk. Second game in a row, he's put up career numbers following the regular season finale at UCLA. It's Brown on first down for seven. And I can't be the only one pondering, and I'm sure there's both Cal fans in the stadium and at home going, man, where was this? <laughs> where was this aggressiveness in this one-two punch this season with the run and the pass and the aggressiveness down the field? And I think Justin would tell you that when Chase Garbers started and finished every game, they were 6-0. They were just a different team when that guy was healthy. And even though he came back from injury, I think he feels a whole lot better today than he did at any point in November. Brown again lowers the shoulder. Harding finishes him off just shy of the marker. And it'll be third and about a yard. And we talked about these two middle linebackers coming into the game. You see number nine is going to scrape back over the play, and he's going to come and do his best to make sure 230 pounds goes the other way. Some guys just like to hit. Yeah. There are a lot of those guys in this game. Two very defensive-minded programs. They're down one for Cal. Brown trying to fight for it, but he didn't get it. Harding was the first man to hit him. Yeah, we were just talking during the last commercial about these two middle linebackers. And while we felt their presence, we haven't felt their total impact on the game. This is the most impactful play yet, I think, between Weaver and Harding. And while he doesn't finish that tackle, it is him flying there behind the line of scrimmage that just stopped the feet of Christopher Brown and ultimately stopped that possession in a three and out that was a must. Nation's top two tacklers, Weaver and Harding, both six today. And it's just how you draw it up if you're Lovey Smith. You punt, pin him down around the 10 and a three and out. <laughs> Line drive punt from Coots, but away from Navarro. It's a good cow bounce inside the 30. Down to Bruce. Guys, as you, a lot of people may have noticed, Illinois has the number 97 on their helmets, and it's for Bobby Roundtree as a defensive lineman. Last May, near his home in Largo, Florida, he suffered a severe spinal injury while swimming. And at this point now, his recovery has really picked up. He had spent a lot of time in rehab and in surgery in Florida. He moved to a facility in Chicago, and he stunned his teammates in late November in a game against Northwestern. He spoke to the crowd on the video board and talking to Lovey Smith about it. He said, really, this guy has been so inspirational and we've cheered on his comeback every step of the way. He means so much to this program. Uh, first down, it is Rayvon Bonner. A few of the guys from Illinois went up and visited him on Christmas Day. And I am sure he is watching this game right now. And he got a tear in his eye thinking about this team and Coach Smith and also saying, let's go, guys. Where's the juice? That was what he was saying to him when he came and visited the locker room. Where's the juice? Where's the energy? He was the energizer guy. And I guarantee you he's asking for it right now by this and for this offense to respond. Still set up a locker for him wherever they are for each game. Another run for Bonner. This has kind of been the plan for Illinois. So diminished at receiver. Do what they can on first and second down a lot of times. Running the ball and see where they wind up on third down. But you just don't see a crease, right? I mean, those are hard yards. Those are back-to-back -back possessions now where it's run, run, third and four. Run, run, third and four. They're just not those seams. And whether it's Bonner, Brown, Corbin, all three of those backs have largely felt the presence of that front seven. But the Pac-12 has felt for the last three years with Justin Wilcox as he's really changed the dynamic at the line of scrimmage defensively with these Bears. Yeah, I said it a few minutes ago, two defensive-minded programs. Who would have thought you would ever say that about Cal? Third down four coming up here. Peters tucks it and runs for it. First down across the 40. Well, he doesn't throw it quite like number 18 from Indianapolis that I backed up for a couple years, but Peyton didn't do this much either. <laughs> so he grew up idolizing Peyton Manning as every young quarterback in the state of Indiana does. And that's a added tool that he's got in his toolbox. I'm sure he had a Brock Heward jersey too. <laughs> no. 
That is Lone Toa Iloa with a tackle on Dre Brown. But what is it again? It's a two-yard game. run. Yeah. And short it's, game. Yes, and it's just their square, right? When you watch these Cal defenders on that D-line, it really doesn't matter who it is and they're too deep. They just stay square to the line of scrimmage, right? Illinois is a side. They're a lateral run game. They want to get people running. And just watch, instead of watching the ball, just watch how square those guys stay to the line. It squeezes the gaps, and then ultimately Weaver and Dang and the secondary are the beneficiaries of that. Here's Brown, stopped by Hawk Schreider. And it's a Cal run defense that the last four games has held opponents below 50 yards per game. And so when you look at what Illinois has been able to do, 142 yards total, that's pretty darn impressive. But the quarterback, the leading rusher? Right. Not a lot of it came very early, especially that first drive. They do again set themselves up with a very manageable third down, though, with the back-to-back -back runs. Third and three, Cal showed pressure and backed off. Brown gets clipped down by Travion Beck. The 5-9 nickel playing big right there and making it fourth down. Yeah, we saw Beck earlier jump a third down route. He jumped a little option route. And you do this because you have eyes in the backfield. Look at this. He's looking the entire way. This is a little option. A really good play on the edge, too, to make that ball dip a little bit. That's Ben Hawk Schreider that makes that ball go even deeper and allow Beck to attack upfield even more. And ultimately, the secure tackle. One of the things that Justin Wilcox was displeased with after the first half is how poorly they were tackling. Nice open field tackle there. And another punt coming from Hayes. All the way back inside the five, and Remigio goes back and fields it and brings it to the 11. <laughs> Remigio could do that again, would probably let it go into the end zone. He pays the price for the hard hit as well. Cal leads the Red Box Bowl by two touchdowns. Want to remind you, you can check out all of Joel Klatt's Breaking the Huddle content sponsored by Dr. Pepper at foxsports.com slash breaking the huddle and on Fox Sports social platforms. I think Joel, like the rest of us, was all over those social platforms on just an unbelievable weekend of football. I mentioned Joe Burrow just on fire for LSU and that Ohio State Clemson game. 60 minutes that just were as good a college football as you're ever going to see. And the guys just laying it on the line for one another. Cal, this drive starts at the 12. Garber is throwing the slam for Crawford out to the 30 on a gain of 19. All of that run, you got a 100 yard rusher. You see the commitment of the safety and those linebackers coming to the line of scrimmage. This is a reaction to that last drive where you saw Harding, where you saw the Illini really coming and attacking the run game. So, what do you do off of it? And you run that slant right behind him, and Garber's once again on the money. Crawford, who's missed much of the season because of injuries, limped off there. out of the backfield open underneath nice first down gain for the junior from Sacramento probably worth mentioning this Illinois defense giving up some yards this year but the difference is they've been excellent in the red zone and then they've third in the country in takeaways and they've not really sniffed it today there's not been a ball that Garbers has really put in harm's way he's done like that taking the check down or on the verticals put it right on the money it really feels like for Levy you better find a way to get a turnover in the final 15 plus minutes here if you're just going to change the energy and the dynamic of this game. Yeah, so one of the best in the country had taken it away, but Cal offensively, if they keep it right here, they're going to set a program record for the fewest turnovers in a season. A bubble to Remigio, stopped by Sidney Brown. Only 13 turnovers, now 12 and a half games this year for Cal. Program record for fewest is 15. Chapman and Justin Wilcox is for the first final year of Sonny Dykes, 2016. It's remarkable about that. Monster had five interceptions. The backup quarterback, a true freshman thrown in at Utah. Brash had an interception. So six of those 13 came from the backup quarterbacks in four games. 
Again, speaking of just how important Garbers was at protecting that football, how elite they were in that phase of the game. This third quarter will come to a close. The fourth to begin with a third down and about a foot. Chase Garbers having one heck of a red box ball. His Golden Bears with a two touchdown lead to the fourth in Santa Clara. Welcome back to the 2019 Red Box Bowl on Fox and ready for the fourth quarter with Cal scoring the only touchdown of the third quarter, leading 28-13. Get that time of possession. That's remarkable. Wow. Almost dead even. Fourth quarter beginning with a third down and about a foot. Garbers snuck it for a touchdown earlier today, trying to sneak it for a first down here. It looks like he got a pretty good spot. You were saying earlier, do you think more teams would sneak it if it wasn't called a quarterback sneak? <laughs> I think you're probably right. Yeah. It just sounds so meek. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go quarterback plunge. Love it. Plow, you said. Wow. And again, especially when you can get now the benefit. So you know, on that play, Ton just the tight end is able to come around and push. I mean, get the added benefit. Of being able to get guys in motion right behind you. So you, even if you get stopped on that initial contact, I'm telling you, if there's a study this offseason, the success rate of those QB sneaks in short yard is off the charts. I like it though. Quarterback plow, quarterback push, quarterback bully. <laughs> Change the mindset. Here's play action. Here's a long throw over everybody's head. And it's second and ten as Trayvon Clark was out there, but so were several orange shirts. A quarterback Brady. I mean, Tom's done it for 20 years. And one, like, he's the greatest of all time. And I think that that's a pretty successful play. And Chase does have a really good feel for it. Still, I don't know if it, if it triggers enough, uh, <laughs> like, of an angry image. You know, head down. True. I like your first thought. Plow. Perfect. Garbers to throw on second and ten. Good coverage initially. Underneath, Brown comes open. And Christopher Brown Jr. with a first down into Illini territory. Illinois ripping at that ball, but Brown hanging on to it for a gain of 14. It really was a year ago that this quarterback had three picks and 90 yards passing in a bowl game. And you just see a totally confident, different guy, eyes down the field the entire way. He's feeling that pocket. And ultimately, he's taking his outlet. Yes, he's pushed the ball down the field, but he's done just that as many times. And the efficiency number's off the charts. He'll throw it again. Makai Polk. A flag on Sidney Brown, who gave just a little subtle grab of the hips. I mean, that corner route that we have seen Cal attack a number of different times today. Pass interference on the defense, number 30. It's a 15 yard penalty, results in a first down. So you got a lot of cushion and you got a corner route coming. We've seen this in the red zone. We saw it a third down catch by Romijo. And that time, again, you're just beat and you're wrapping around the waist. You're going to draw the penalty. That's the fourth pass interference call on Illinois today. Four of those seven penalties, so four PIs and three delays offensively. Moves it to the 31. Already a two touchdown lead for Cal. Collins motions out. Garbers with his eyes downfield again will take what the defense gives him and a good open field tackle by Devin Witherspoon who's played a pretty good game here in his first career start. Uh, he's going to be a good one for the next three years. He came into camp late. He was all poised to go to Huntington Junior College. A couple days before training camps, spot opens, opportunity awaits. And both he and Hobbs on the other side are going to play a lot of football for Lovey Smith, and those are two corners that do not mind tackling. How about going from uh, planning on being at a junior college in August to starting a bowl game for a Big Ten team in December? Okay. Second down, six. 
Garber steps up and slides. The spot over the slide began, which is just across 25, third and short. And I think you're in four down territory. If you're going to be consistent for Bo Baldwin and Justin Wilcox in your mindset over this afternoon, we saw them before halftime on fourth down, not settle for a field goal to go up 17 10, said, went right for the jugular. And I think right now is probably going to be in Bo's ear and say, hey, you got two plays now to get these four yards. You wouldn't take the points, make it a three score game. I think that they're going to be consistent in their mindset to be aggressive. On third and four. Wow, what a hit by Milo Eifler. A flag flies as Marcel Dancy gets drilled. And of course, the thought initially is that this would be a targeting call. Let's see. Personal foul targeting on the defense, number five. The previous play is under further review. What do you think? This is going to be a really good one to discuss with Dean Blandino as well. Yancey, defenseless yeah. player. I, I don't think he has converted from receiver into running back to protect himself. So do you have forcible contact with any part of your body to the head or neck area? Dean, what do you think? Yeah, so the first thing we have to establish, is he a defenseless player? It's close, but whenever you have a receiver that's attempting to complete the catch, you give him the benefit of the doubt. So I still have him defenseless. Now we look at the posture of the defender. Is he attacking? Is he initiating forcible contact to the head neck area? They're going to reofficiate this, and if they can, can't confirm all elements, they can overturn. It does look like there's forcible contact to the head neck area. It's close, though. You see that shoulder. Yeah. There's a lot of shoulder to there the is. body here. So, Dean, are, are there enough other indicators? I think we've learned that over the course of this season and these conversations with you. Are there enough other indicators to also trigger that? Yeah, to me, it does look like he's leading with the shoulder and makes enough contact with the shoulder to the body. Well, I'm just not sure that this is actually targeting. And again, they have to reofficiate it. And if they can't confirm all elements, they'll overturn it. I think you love the fact that Eifler is coming in with the shoulder, and he's saying that right there. I'm coming in with the shoulder. I'm not leading right with the crown of my helmet, which we saw the other night. Yeah, but again, it doesn't matter no. if he's a defenseless Correct. player. Correct. So the only thing you would say, I think, to Eifler in that case is, can you just change your target, right? Instead of coming anywhere near that head or neck area, can you hit him in the ribs? Can you dislodge that run? That's what you're trying to teach and train with these After calls. After review, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. Number five is ejected from the game. Half the distance, automatic first down. So Eifler is ejected for the targeting. And in the context of the game situation, the bigger deal is that it's a first down and it moves it all the way to the 11. And I know people are going to say, but he got his head out of the way. It doesn't matter if it's forcible contact on a defenseless player to the head or neck area. It could be your forearm. And if it's your forearm that is that forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player, you're going to get, by rule, what you just got, a confirmation of that targeting call. And Cal, the least penalized team in the Pac-12. Illinois, the second most penalized team in the Big Ten, and both of those trends have continued today. Just three penalties on the Golden Bears. That is the eighth on Illinois. And it makes it first and ten at the 11-yard line. Dancy motions out. Garbers over the middle into a tight window, finds Reinwald, but he couldn't hang on. Nearly had his second touchdown of the day, and some of his buddies think that he does, but that's incomplete. It's incomplete. It's a wonderful song, but it's second and ten. <laughs> and I think Gavin tried to kind of sell it. <laughs> Everybody was selling it. I mean, the band, the O-lineman. Oh, it's because it was yet another dart right into that zone coverage. The anticipation's been awesome from Chase, and that's pretty darn close early, right? He has control of it early as he goes to the ground. It's that's great work by the officials sure in real is. time. He loses control there, and that is incomplete. That's well done by this officiating crew. So second down, Dancy. 
the six. Third and ten, or third and five. Now you may be in a different situation here, Joe. Talk about that four down territory at the 25 yard line with a kicker that has been a bit iffy in that in that distance, in that range, in that intermediate range. But that's what's going on right now. What do you want to do here? How do you want to approach this situation if you don't get this right here? That's Greg Thomas. Who looks ready to go. 12th play of this drive coming up here. And they work out of an empty set. On third and five from the six. Garber is back at the end zone. Remigio. That's a Cal touchdown. The fourth of the day for Chase Garbers to a fourth different target. And this was big time eyes and shoulders manipulating the zone coverage. Chase knows exactly where he wants to go. And all of that action is to set up the movement to move the safeties out of the way to open that window even larger for Mejio to close it with the touchdown. It has all come together for Nico Remigio late this season. The huge performance in the big game. Played well against UCLA. And he's got a touchdown here that has extended the lead for Cal to three touchdowns here in the fourth quarter of the Red Box Bowl. Of Utah set a bowl record with 222 yards, and Utah beat Indiana. 26-24. Chase Garbers with his fourth touchdown pass today. This one to Nico Remigio. Good day for the Pac-12 a few years ago, and a good day for the Pac-12 today. Washington started bowl season with a big win over Boise State. USC gets thumped by Iowa. Wazoo can't stop the Air Force Academy, and this is one of those Power Five on Power Five, Big Ten, Pac-12 matchups that you want. Yeah, the Big Ten has dominated in head-to-head -head matchups the last few years between these two conferences. I'm going to go a little clicker crazy on you here, Joe Davis. This was the touchdown. We talked about the eyes of Garbers earlier. Look at his eyes. See, it takes everybody away, and he does that for this purpose, to affect this linebacker right here. Those eyes are left, and all he wants to do is move Harding, and this is a tough spot for this backer to be in, but he wants to move him to open that window to throw it right behind his ear, and he gets it done. The manipulation, right? Drew Brees, the best in the business, using those shoulders and eyes when you know it's zone coverage and you put a linebacker in a really difficult space to try to cover. It's one of the things Bo Baldwin talked about this week was how important it would be for him to move the backers, move the safeties with his eyes and his shoulders as that one is incomplete for Navarro. And he's done a masterful job of it today. Not just the four touchdowns, but no turnovers against his ball hawking defense. And you know what else he's had? He's had a lot of time. He's gotten the ball out of his hands, but Justin Wilcox hired Steve Graywood as O-line coach. He was his first hire at Cal. The first guy that he wanted to bring on his staff. This will be his last game he's coached, and his O-line has done a fine job. Navarro makes a nice snag on this one, but it's only for three. And he'll find Justin Wilcox, another coordinator. He will, there, and there are a lot of coordinators that would be very interested in this job working for Justin. But I would contend finding that right O-line coach is just as critical in that process. Hard to find, especially ones that have done it for four decades, like that man, Steve Graywood has. A couple Oregon guys, Justin Wilcox played there. Steve Graywood, most of his career was as a coach there. He played there as well. Peters finds Justice Williams for his first catch of the day near midfield. How about that throw right over Evan Weaver? Some impressive strikes today from Peters, yes. huh? And you're going to return your offensive line all next season. I mean, that is big time. That's a dropping linebacker, and you've got to throw it right over his reach with enough velocity in front of Hawkins to make it happen. Fake to Brown. A little bit tight window for Navarro, and we go down to Bruce. Joe, as Brock was saying before, actually they have three offensive assistants they're going to have to replace. A receiver coach, as well as obviously Steve Greatwood and Bo Baldwin, who's moving on. I talked to Justin Wilcox a little bit before the game. You know, when you were talking about all the motion and shifts and a lot of stuff we've seen people at Boise do, uh, a lot of things that, that he wants to do, Justin Wilcox, really to take advantage of the intelligent kids that they feel like they can recruit here. And that's the system he wants to stay with. It's similar to what Bo Baldwin's doing. And I think after uh, the first, 
he's going to get into it and try to speed up this process. Don't be surprised if he looks at a guy with some NFL experience either. It's Carlos Sandy with his first catch this year, Brock. Yeah, you're not going to see a tempo, no huddle, air it out, go crazy. You're going to see, I think, a system similar to what Bo Baldwin established here with a lot of scheme, a lot of variation, and still wanting to win at the line of scrimmage. So he complimented defensive centric head coach as well. They're being pressure here with Illinois in an empty set. That's thrown behind Sandy and almost intercepted by Bynum. Instead, second and ten. I think that ball may have been tipped by Croto at the line of scrimmage here. Or it may have just come off a little bit loose from Brandon's hands. Might have been dang even before Croto. Well, if it was dang, that was number nine. But he is number one on the team in pass breakups in middle in inside linebacker. You surprised? 6'6. Six, six. Former basketball player. In fact, he was more heavily recruited as a basketball player than he was football and originally went to VMI to play both. He just couldn't give football up though. Peters eyes downfield zips one inside the 10 perfectly done to Trenard Davis and it's first and goal. Well, whatever you can do chase manipulating the safeties and you see a little even pump fake here in the eyes. Brandon Peters says I can do better and throw that same strike deep down the field. And a tremendous response here that the Illini had to have. Corbin sidesteps a man and finds Dang waiting for him. This is a team that erased 31 10 fourth quarter deficit against Michigan State earlier this season, but they had Josh Amater Bay Bay. They don't have nearly as many options outside for Peters. And down a few scores with eight plus left to go here. I think that is where you feel it more than anything else is down in this red zone. Just that trusty one on one receiver that you are willing to put any 50 50 ball up in the air to. Corbin looking for the corner. He's got it. Touchdown, Illinois. They've got it back to two scores with 8 0 1 left. Well, it's that edge again, and that's Croto, the true freshman there for Cal that just loses the containment. You see Jake Cerny, the left guard, gets enough of that edge, and it doesn't take much for Corbin, for Brown, for Bonner. You just got to give them some green grass, and they'll make you pay, and that's exactly what the Illini did in a hurry. So they go 75 yards in nine plays, and you said in a hurry, three minutes and five seconds, still with a pulse. Take a look at today's All-State Mayhem moment, and Brock, he just wants one high <laughs> five. Somebody, don't leave him hanging. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> so Please. No. Okay, how about you? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh. Hoping and praying there's more to high five about over the final eight minutes of this game. Illinois back to within two touchdowns. And Deshaun Collins on the return for Cal to the 22. 7.57 left to go. Back in a moment. Seven plus left to go in the Red Box Bowl. Cal has been in command here in the second half. Illinois a touchdown a moment ago to draw back to within two touchdowns. And Brock, we've talked about it a few times, but 28 takeaways this season for Illinois. Third in the country, still looking for their first today. And boy, do they need it badly here or what? Christopher Brown gets two on first down. And that's going to require maybe a little aggressive call, a little bit of pressure and playing that man behind. It's also going to re just require some relentless pursuit and tackling to rip and claw at that football. Always been a principle of that man's scheme and defense is to take the ball away. Only FAU and Baylor have forced more turnovers this season than the Illini. Both those teams have played more than 
12 games. Man to man look for second and eight. Dancy motions out. Garber's looking over the middle, getting pursued from behind. Garber's lets it fly, incomplete, broken up by Hobbs. Polk, the intended receiver. Oh boy, third and eight. But he did the right thing. He didn't go through the receiver and draw a fifth pass interference penalty today. Yeah, he wanted the takeaway, but if he went through Polk, he's gonna get another penalty. He does the smart thing there. He avoids the contact, he knocks the ball away. And you're one play away now from a three and out getting that ball right back. And Hobbs, a guy Lovey Smith thinks is going to play for a long time. NFL future for the junior corner from Louisville. Third and eight for the Golden Bears. Illinois shows pressure and brings it. It's picked up momentarily, then it's popped in the air and incomplete. Isaiah Gay, the man that hit Garbers as he threw, and it's fourth down. Wow. Wow. And a chance here for the Illini. They bring six. You knew they were going to heat it up and bring some pressure all man to man on that possession. And then, oh, in and out of the arms of Jamal Woods <laughs> right there. His takeaway 29 was in the fingertips of the defensive tackle. That said, it's a three and out. Yep. The possession lasts less than a minute. And so feels... Coots on to punt. The line drive. And dangerously looks like it might have hit an Illinois player. And then driven out of bounds at the 37-yard line by Natherda. So 6.52 to go in a two-score game. Illinois has been in this position before. They think they can do it. 35-20, 6.52 left to go. Our rules expert, Dean Blandino, back in Los Angeles. Dean, back on that third down play. Looks like there's maybe more to it. Yeah, definitely more to it. It was ruled an incomplete pass. Watch this. That ball is out before the hand comes forward. Then we've got to look for a clear recovery. And it looked like Harding from Illinois actually came up with it. That's a play replay has to stop. Even if they're not sure who recovered it, you see it's a fumble. You take a look to try to determine who did recover it because that can be a turnover. Yeah, and a turnover that the Illini so desperately needed. Really surprised, Dean, you don't stop the game. For the magnitude of the moment here, we're in the final six minutes of this game. You know that you know that everyone does their prep. The guys in the booth do their prep. You know the takeaway is such a key to this, and that ball is up in the air. And yes, Isaiah Guy Gay gets to the arm of Chase Garbers before he goes to throw. That should have been a fumble, and that ball should be on the 20. Yeah, and you get the ball a couple plays later, but you lose 45 yards. And about a half minute. And energy and momentum. And yes, you know, all of that belief, they still believe that they can do it. But you also lean right back into what you've done all season. So here we go. Peters chucks it down to Dre Brown. He's close to a first down in the first play of the drive, and he's going to have more with a flag flying on a late hit on Evan Weaver. But just like that, you're right down there around where, uh, foul, where you should have been. hit out of bounds. Number 89 what on the defense. What they say, Brock? Ball don't 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. You're going to see Weaver makes contact here in the field of play. All right, so now you got to let up. You got to let up. You got to let up. So all the way down to the 37. Again, this is an Illinois team that won a game this season, which they trailed 31-10 early on in the fourth quarter, coming from behind to beat Michigan State. Peters drilled as he let it go. It's tipped and picked. Jalen Hawkins. Hawkins with blockers in front. Crosses midfield, and Cal takes it right back. There are flags down back around where the ball was intercepted. And if Ben Hawksrider does not make this hit, this could be a touchdown the other way. That was a double move, a little in and go. Illinois had thrown underneath an awful lot. They've been sitting on that play, a double move. After the interception, the legal block in the back on the defense, number 97. That penalty enforced, 10 yards, first down, California. Now, Newsium had a chance. 
Hawkins was able to come up with it. Yeah, how about this stunt from the kid from Berkeley whose dream was to be a Golden Bear. He went to Chattanooga. He's a grad transfer. If he does not make this hit, I am telling you, this could have been a touchdown the other way. A beautiful route by Donnie Navarro. Look at this, a little double move. He's got him. And if that ball is to the outside, we're talking about the ball at the 15, a one-on-one -on -one tackle with Hawkins for a touchdown. Instead, the pressure, Anusium gets his hands on it. And sure enough, Jalen Hawkins finishes it. Hawkins, a guy that a year ago had three interceptions in the bowl game. Gets one here, first turnover of the game, and with 624, Cal's got it again. Oh, so close. In so many ways over the last couple minutes. Well, here they go from the 20. Brown straight ahead. You know, you heard Dabo Sweeney at the end of the Clemson game with their little pop pass, the play action pass, touchdown, say we sat on that all game. We've been waiting. We knew scheme wise we were going to run that at some point, and they held it and they held it and they held it to the final drive. That last call by Rod Smith, that double move, they've been holding that. They've been waiting for that, for that opportunity. And if they could have blocked Ben Hawksrider on that play, Brandon, Brandon Peters maybe has another touchdown. We're in a one score game. Winding inside six minutes. Two timeouts left for Illinois. Brown will lose a couple this time. Harding with another tackle, along with Patiku. Well, Fox Sports Super Six. Download the app today. Super Six NFL playoffs. Free and the chance went up $25,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money. He's still got money. All season long. I guess nobody's any good at Super <laughs> Six. That's a big play. And going right back to that aggressive man to man mindset. If you're going to beat us, you're going to have to beat man coverage right now. On third and eight, they bring four. Garber's in trouble. He's able to step away and keep it alive, but a flag down, and Garber's down. Kalen Tolson finished him off, but a flag in the area of holding. Now that's going to be a hold on Isaiah Gay from the tight end, Jake Tonjes. Holding on the offense, number 85. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Back-to-back -back third downs where Isaiah Gay has made his presence known. You're going to see the hold right here. Just an inside rush, busting through the double team. And these guys have some fight. They are the fight in the line afterwards, after all, and they just will continue to battle and battle, and they're in this bowl game because of what they've done in the fourth quarter. You've referenced Michigan State a number of times. Wisconsin, they finished with a game-winning kick. They will play to the final whistle. The punt from Coots. Oh, my goodness. Daniel Scott with a huge hit on special teams for Cal on Nate Hobbs. Back here in Santa Clara, there were offsetting penalties on that punt, so they'll replay it. 4.15 left to go. Justin Wilcox's team looking for its first bowl, first bowl win since 2015. And with a win, would match the most wins Cal has had this decade. It was a face mask on Cal, and then a hold on Illinois on the return, and that's an offset and another chance here for a return. Better punt this time, backs Navarro up to the 31. Great coverage again by Cal. The NFL postseason is here, and this Sunday, Fox has the NFC wildcard game. The Vikings and the Saints starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, Sunday on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And those folks in New Orleans were up late last night watching that Sunday night thriller in Seattle saying, come on. 
They are inches away from being the number one seed themselves and instead are going to have to host that game this weekend because the Niners beat them head to head in that building. Well, here we go again, Brock, for Brandon Peters in Illinois. Down two touchdowns, 4.05 left to go, looking for some of that magic that they've sprinkled throughout this season. They're facing pressure. Carlos Sandy. And if you're Cal, you want to keep everything in front of you, but you do not want those big chasms in the zone that they had the previous drive. Right, you want to play that zone defense, you want to keep everything in front of you, but then you cannot give up the explosive. And it was the explosive vertical that set up their last touchdown. There's Sandy four, so it's second and six as Peters climbs the pocket, tucks it down, extends the play and runs for a big gain into Cal territory. Give him 12, 328 left to go. First and 10 of the 49. And you got to get right to the ball and have that next play called. <laughs> Corner blitz from the near side. They hit the crosser. It's Sandy again, who stumbled. And flags come flying. It's going to be a blindside block against Illinois. Daniel Barker. Tight end who had a good first half. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 87. That's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. We'll replay first down. Yeah, you love your teammates coming back and helping you out, but you just can't do this in today's college football. Right? You got to initiate that contact with your hands. Right? You can still hit that defender, but it has got to be with your hands first to lessen that blow. With a point of emphasis all season long. This moves it all the way back to the 39, costs him about 17 yards. Live, if the, the foul was a live ball foul, we'll replay first down. First and 22. No Evan Weaver right now on the field. Colt Dowdy in his place. Last time we saw Weaver on the field, he was called for the personal foul. Finishing a hit late out of bounds. Peters hit from behind by Cameron Good, who's been a standout on this Cal defense today. And really this season with sack now number nine and a half on the air. He is by far their most dynamic edge defender. Been a guy that has battled a bunch of injury and went healthy. And I think this last month has paid huge dividends for him as well. He can get up and go. Sandy's got it. Good. A guy that'll be back. Many will. You talked about the offense bringing everybody back. The defense bringing back more than you would think just looking at the classes. They've got defensive ends, Luke Beckett and Zionde Johnson, who are both fifth year seniors, but both plan to apply for a sixth year and are optimistic about their chances. On third and long, Peters in trouble again, throws incomplete. Wanted Sandy, coverage from Bynum, fourth down and last chance. You know, it was fourth and 17 in East Lansing. That's true, but you had Josh Amater Bebe. Yeah, you did. It's been pretty impressive, though. I don't know what Brandon Peters has been able to do today without Amater Bebe and without all those targets. Yeah, he moves really well, and he throws it really well, and he's going to have to make one of his best throws of the afternoon to keep this game alive. At a minute 53. Cal takes its first time out. Back in 30 seconds. And Cal started this season 4-0, then they lost four in a row, won three of four to finish the regular season, and trying to finish it off with their eighth win, which would match the most they've had this decade. 
And I think really bounce them into next year where they got a real chance with Oregon and that Pac-12 North just based on who is coming back and most importantly that quarterback. There'll be no Jacob Eason, no Anthony Gordon, no Justin Herbert, no KJ Costello. There will be no Bo Baldwin, but man, Chase Garber's been special this afternoon. Last gasp here for Brandon Peters in Illinois on fourth and 17. First reads are covered. He scrambles. He runs. He dives. Did he get it? They're going to spot him just short. Oh, what a heroic effort, though, from Brandon Peters, who is slow to get up. First down, California. Wow. And that linesman is right on it. He is watching the entire way. And what an unbelievable effort. Been a busy day for Dean Blandino. A lot of close calls, a lot of plays that have gone to review. What do you think about the spot on this one, Dino? Yeah, this is really close. The spot is where the ball crosses the sideline. You have an airborne player that is going to land out of bounds. Where does that ball cross the sideline? The line to gain, it looked like it might just be short of that 39-yard that line. It's really close. And obviously, replay can look at this, and they would have to determine where it crossed in relation to the line to gain. Yeah. And that linesman is running right down that line, and he's got the best eyes. The ruling of the field, of the, on the field, was a player short of the line to gain. The previous play is under further review. So they are going to take a look. What an incredible effort. Awesome. I mean, you see him take off and run. It's, he needs 17 yards, you think, and he's got no shot. And I am just so glad that it has nothing to do with a head injury. He's had two concussions this year that have knocked him out of games. I think he knocks the wind as he's fully exerting full speed launching. And it's just so hard to see where that ball, as Dean says, where it is in relation to the sidelines when it goes out. It's not where it finishes. And, and again, as we often see, the key becomes what was the spot on the field. Yep. Really hard to overturn. So these are in sync. Still tough, yeah. but it, it looks to be sure. It looks Still to be pretty darn good. There, I don't field. see any indisputable shot there that's right. going to move that ball. All the way inside or to the 39 for a first down. When to sink him up like that, it winds up looking like a yeah. almost really, really good spot in real time. Yep. By really good, I mean really accurate. So if the call does stand, there'll be a minute 40 left. Cal will have it. Illinois, two timeouts. You know, I said the, to you earlier about that Clemson Ohio State game just to watch the effort to see guys get beat up and to come back in and to just fight for their brother was so impressive After to review, me. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's first down California. Yep. And I think that is the right call. And when they look at the game tape, I think Lovey Smith would agree with that. But you feel the same thing here tonight. It's just how hard guys have been playing, how hard they've covered punts, how hard they've covered kicks, how much Brandon Peters has exerted himself in extended plays. Right? I mean, just the love for, for playing the game and then ultimately for your teammate next to you. That's what you want to establish within the culture of your program. This is a program with a lot of new faces this season to Illinois. Right, Kel's had a lot of guys here for three years that have grown in this thing together. And I are going to take and bank a lot of experience from this season pushing into 2020. Carry here for Alex Nathurda. Uh, you, uh, you know, you talk about Cal as being a potential contender in the Pac-12 next season, bringing back those 10 starters on offense. Interesting uh, game three, huh, against Bo Baldwin, then moving over to Cal Poly. And TCU, love to see that. I love to see those power five. Justin has not ducked that, right? They went and played at Ole Miss. They played an SEC foe. He's not ducked away from that power five competition. You can makes your team better. Pays dividends. They're going to be loaded on offense. 
And as you said, if they get a six year for Zionde Johnson and for Luke Beckett, they're going to move, I think, some of their pieces around in the secondary. Bynum's going to return. Hicks will return. Daniel Scott got huge experience and really is going to be replacing Evan Weaver, which you can talk to the folks up in Washington with Ben Burkirvan. Easier said than done. 410 some tackles in his career and just the pulse of that group defensively over the last few years. That will be the biggest void to fill. Third again, Illinois will use its final timeout here. Fridays on Fox, SmackDown, WWE, 8 Eastern. I know you'll be watching, whole Heward household will. It's a good thing you saved this promo for last, by the way. Because, you know, I've been known to lose my mind over the course of the season with this one, so. <laughs> Yeah, this one is recorded, and uh, Titus not happy when I deleted some of the past. Don't do that. I know. It's in the deleted folder, yeah. though, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. So we talk about Cal looking ahead to next season. Illinois, you think there's a chance Illinois could be next year's Minnesota? At least early. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the schedule plays out that way. A very favorable September. Right, Purdue, a road trip to Lincoln where they've not won in a long time. But you got a lot of seniors to be next year that gained a ton of experience this season. And watch out for them in the month of September as those pieces come together. Cal looking for one more first down to seal the deal. They'll put it in Garber's hands. And he gets ripped down by Sean Bagno. Inbounds, though, so the clock will continue to run. Clean. Yep. Clock so continues to run, but it is fourth down, and the putt team will come out. Iowa Shock Bagno, that'll be the final play of his college football career. He's got another year of eligibility, but deciding to focus on his studies and moving forward into the real world. What a way to go out. Yep. <laughs> Sack. I wish he would have preferred a different outcome to this one. With inside a minute left to go, and Cal up two touchdowns. Second charge timeout for California. One of them left for Cal. Called the timeout to get the punt team all set out onto the field. You're talking about Lovey Smith's team looking ahead to next season. Pretty darn easy non conference slate and then a relatively easy start to Big Ten play. Yep. And he has said it. He's voiced it to us and to a lot of different people is that he really felt like they were poised for 2020. To go in the grad transfer route and as heavy as they did and as much success and bang for the buck that they had with those grad transfers. And those aren't one year grad transfers. Brandon Peters a two year grad transfer. Matter Bebe a two year grad transfer. Batico a true year, two year grad transfer. And they're all going to be seniors next year. With a marquee win this year, a bowl appearance this year, and a whole lot more on the agenda for 2020. I mentioned those six Power Five transfers that have started multiple games this year. Five of them will be back, and they've got another two who are redshirting this year. And to be eligible to go in the year that Levy Smith has said to be the one they've been pointing for. So 29 seconds. Illinois no timeouts. This is one Justin wanted. This is one I think the conference needed as you point ahead to bowl season here for the Pac-12. You've still got ASU versus Florida State. You've got obviously the Rose Bowl with Oregon and I think a really good matchup with a former school that Justin Wilcox coached at the Wisconsin Badgers and then Utah Texas as well. This is going to be Brock just the second. Pac-12 win against the Big Ten head to head over the last three years. It'll be two and seven now. Out of bounds, number 22, half the distance to the goal, first down. So an inconsequential penalty there on Illinois. Move it back inside the 10 yard line. And a much deserved smile there for Chase Garbers, who's going to finish the day 22 for 31. 272 and four touchdowns. A little bit different line than the Cheez It Bowl line for him last year. Amazing what confidence and experience can do. Peters 
from his own goal line. He got hit as he cut it loose. Uh, Toa Iloa, second down. Chris Brown Jr., good day today. Had a receiving touchdown. He had 120 yards on the ground. Who is your offensive MVP? Is it Garbage? I think it's yeah. got to be. Just yeah. the way that he played with just confidence, unflappable, sharing the ball with just about anybody and everybody. Peters for Griffin Palmer. And taking care of the ball. Right, should have had the one fumble if they would have taken another look at it. I think that would have been ruled a fumble. But outside of that, took really good care of the football against one of the country's best. they taking the ball away. Dele Harding, what a season he had to finish off his Illinois career. Second leading tackler in the country. So fun to watch him play. Uh -huh. yeah, same thing for Evan Weaver. Closing seconds. Peters to throw again. That is behind Navarro and almost intercepted by Anusium, who a few times today had an opportunity to bring one in, but couldn't quite collect it. Lucky for him, he's got a few years left at Cal. The guy wanted to change the culture. He said it to anybody that would listen. You know, he wanted to change Cal football to be a defensive team, to be a physical team, to be a team that wouldn't fall apart and could finish. And boy, did they today. One more for Navarro. Stop the clock with a first down, but we'll run out with Cal. Getting its eighth win, matching the most in a season this decade. Yeah, their first bowl win since 2015 as Lovey Smith and Illinois finished six and seven. Thirty-five twenty, the final score. Cal wins the 2019 Red Box Bowl. We'll be back with plenty of post-game coverage, including the trophy ceremony, right after these messages. Thirty-five twenty. the final score is Cal beats Illinois and Chase Garbers goes 22 for 31 with four touchdowns and no interceptions. Yeah, I think a career day, maybe a few more yards down at Ole Miss, but Chase has never played better. He knew he had to manipulate the eyes of his own defense and throw some darts. That was the touchdown to Romeo. He also knew he had to spray the ball around. When you're playing a quality defense, you got to get everybody involved. A touchdown to the running back, a touchdown to the tight end. I love that anticipation right there. 1.5 seconds, throw a seed. You get a big W. And that trophy will be handed out. Bruce Feldman will be down on the field for the trophy ceremony right after these messages in Santa Clara. Cal wins the Red Box Bowl. Now time to hand out the hardware down to the field. Bruce Feldman. All right, Joe. Hard-hitting physical game between two programs on the rise. Standing here first with the offensive MVP of the game, Chase Garbers. Chase, every guy who scored in this game for you guys is a sophomore. Where do you think this program is heading from this game? Well, we have all of our starters returning back on offense, so next year is going to be a crazy year for the offense. And this win launches our trajectory forward for next year. All right. Here is our defensive MVP, Zionde Johnson. Two tackles for loss, a sack, and a forced fumble. You are one of the guys who is leaving this program as a senior. Where do you feel like the program is headed? Oh, it's heading for the sky, man. These guys, every single one of these guys, you see young guys in these crowds, they've been working. Now, they showed up today. Had a lot of guys young coming out and playing, making plays. We had Braxton Croto coming in, making plays. We had everybody here. All right, thanks. Uh, we're standing here with Galen Smith. He's the CEO of Redbox. He has some a few words for the head coach here, Justin Wilcock. Great. Thanks, Bruce. So congratulations to Coach Wilcox and the Cal Bears. On behalf of Redbox and its 1,400 employees across the U.S. that bring new movies to everyone, I want to present the Redbox Championship Trophy to Coach Wilcox. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Awesome. All right, congratulations, Thanks, Justin. Bruce.
you talked to us before about how important it was to get to the eighth win yeah. to take the program to the next level. How does this feel going forward? Well, it feels really good, and I'm uh, really proud of this group of guys right here. Uh, we put a stamp on the 2019 season, and this is great momentum for our program moving forward, and I'm really happy for those people up there sitting in the stands who are supporting us. Thank you. You're, stand, you're standing here with the chancellor at Cal, Carol Chris. You have a really young team. Yeah. What is it going to take for you to get beyond eight wins into the, into the next level of that? Well, I think it's everybody. It's uh, every coach and staff member. It's every player in our team. It's our entire institution. Uh, you know, taking that mindset that we're never satisfied and we're going to get back to work January 16th and ready for 2020. But I want everybody to enjoy this win. It took a lot to get here, and it's been a long time to get a bull win for the Bears, and this is big. All right. Congrats, Justin. Guys, Joe, back to you. All right, Bruce. As Cal takes this one, 35-21st bowl win in several seasons, and a big deal for this program, really yeah, is. Yeah, it, it is. And I think anytime you have a quarterback, right, we learn anything from college football, who ends up in New York for the Heisman ceremony, who's playing at the very end, you got to have that position playing and functioning at a really high level. And it is remarkable in one season, the turnaround for Chase Garbers, right, to see him in a bowl game a year ago to where he is today, and that is a launching pad in the next season. That is a launching pad for your program when you've got a guy you feel great Great, and then you return everyone around him. You got a culture established, and this was a big deal. You know, Justin, as you heard Bruce ask him, it was a big deal. He reiterated a number of times how important it was to get this win today in their backyard, and they took care of business. I know not to finish. Illinois was looking for losing the final three games of the season, but progress under Lovey Smith as well. And like we talked about, like he's talked about several times, everything's kind of been pointing towards 2020. Yes, and they were a beat-up team. Now you're down your top three wide receivers. Brandon Peters can play. You're going to hear him in the Big Ten make some noise next year, and that trajectory is going the right direction as well. Happy New Year, man. Can't believe this is it. I don't want this to be yeah. it. Let's go do let's go do something next get next weekend, do another game. Too much fun, man. A few months from now, we'll do it again. Happy New Year to all of you at home. Hope you enjoyed the Red Box Bowl today. Cal 35, Illinois 20. For Brock Heward, Bruce Feldman, and the rest of our wonderful crew, Joe Davis saying so long from Santa Clara. And again, happy and safe New Year. Yeah.